Hey team, I'm Cory, and we're just about a week away from the first Battlesnake community tournament. And no better way to do a community tournament than with a map the community designed. So we're going to do snail mode. Me and Josh made snail mode back in 2022 on stream, and I thought for the tournament it would be fun to put the videos together and give everyone a behind the scenes view of how snail mode was made. I hope you enjoy the video, and I hope to see everyone at the tournament in just about a week on March 4th at noon Eastern. Hope to see you there, and we'll post a recording if you miss it. Maybe it does make sense to start off with a, bit, uh, a separate map and, you know, at least we can start there and see see where to go. Okay, so it looks like empty map is having a name collision. So I, I went ahead and copied the empty map uh, oh, go okay. file and yep. renamed it to snail mode. Um, I don't know if I have a refactoring tool with go to rename this um, struct. I can just rename all instances in this file probably. Yeah, and I think that's probably good enough. I don't actually no i guess like there probably aren't references outside that we want to rename because we don't want to rename every reference to empty yeah we don't want to rename the ones in the other files so yep. we're going to call this uh snail mode map yeah. awesome oh cool all the errors went away at least in my editor yeah i'm saying the errors go away as well um okay Awesome. Uh, can we can we like run this map just to see if it works? Yeah. Or actually, let's we'll change the name. So the name mm -hmm. will be. Um, oops. Um, yeah. So I definitely think we can get it running. Um, and the other thing that was helpful for me when I. Uh, was doing this is I created a little script that did a few things it would compile the go and then run the CLI with all of the flags set up for my snake URL and the browser flag and everything um, just to make it easier um, than having to remember all the steps each time and I um, was going Sorry, I was busy to... typing and didn't hear what you said oh it's okay um, I think the another thing that might be nice is uh, if we can create a little script, I think like PowerShell probably since that's the environment you're in, um, that can just do a few things whenever we want to run the game. It can compile the Go and then call the CLI with all of our snake URLs and everything like that. Um, yeah, I'll go ahead and write a Python script. Because, that works for me. Uh, I, I don't like writing anything in PowerShell or, or Shell or <laughs> Bash or anything like that. That sounds um, great. I'm just gonna call this test.py. Yeah. So we need to do uh, we need to build uh, build the CLI and then run a game uh, with I'm assuming we want like the browser option. Yeah, I think so. Um I really like that option they added. It just makes everything look uh, so much nicer. you uh, work in Python very often? Uh, not very often. I, I think I can read it and everything, but definitely not my primary language. Um, so I definitely wouldn't have been able to set up the, the base of this shell script without, without help. <laughs> uh, I, I've been, this is like my, my comfort zone. So nice. We probably could have gone with a different scripting language for you. Oh, but, absolutely fine. As uh, long as you get it set up, I think I can throw additions on it relatively okay, okay so i think for building the cli we need to take the uh could you paste go find yeah. the readme command and paste it in here that's actually exactly what i was working on look at that cool um yeah so here's what the command's gonna be okay, sweet and then uh yeah you so can throw it in a we can run process sub process <laughs> dot run and then this takes a list. It takes a list of arguments. Oh, you got to split it up. Oh, so you got gotcha. it. Yeah, unfortunately. Uh, I can just hand type out this if you want to work on the, the game running half. Yeah, that sounds good. We got two computers. We might as well take advantage. Oh my gosh, Great. I have Copilot. It just does it for me. Oh my goodness. <laughs> this is magical. Okay. Uh, we also need to find the game command. I think we were running one yesterday. Yeah, so it looks uh, a 
bit like this. Here, I can at least I'm not getting it. paste in the um if I can find out where my VS code lives. There we go. Uh here is mostly what it's gonna look like. We do want the browser on the end. Um and then uh, we each are probably going to want to throw in our snake names and stuff as well. I set up a local ngrok uh, that hopefully works, and I am just going to put this URL on stream team, so please don't abuse it too badly. Yeah. Um, I can always shut it down if anything happens, but I'm not super worried about it. We've got a pretty friendly stream around these parts. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think anyone will try hacking our snakes um, while we're on. Yeah, agreed. Um, so let me see. I need to activate. And then I have to. I'm also looking at how to set up the map name. Okay, awesome. Dash dash map and then the name. So we should be able to. I'm going to put it. Actually, I'm going to switch up the order of these so that the snake stuff can go at the end, just so it's easier for us to see. Um, and this is all a comment, so I'm actually just going to new line it. Okay, uh, we want a dash dash map. And then what did we call this map? Snail mode? Yeah. I like snail mode. Um, yeah, and then I think we just need to uh, sub-process arrayify this. And I'm going to try just doing it myself so that I can uh, try and get Copilot just to, like, do all of it for me again. Let's see how 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 good did it do. Uh, solo browser map snail mode. That was looking looked pretty good. I think that's good. Uh, I can paste the URL from my snake as yeah, well. Yeah, if you're okay, we can also move off of this uh, file if you don't want it on stream. But no, no, that's fine. Um, because this is my dev snake. Oh yeah, I forgot you were actually spinning up uh, new uh, boxes, so you're you're more prepared than I was. Yes, I have lots of dev snakes, <laughs> um, but this one I think is the one that I actually got working last night to where it can run this game mode. Nice. Yeah, I also so we uh, prepared a little bit yesterday and uh, tried to make it so our snakes will understand. Um, not necessarily the full game mode, but one thing that we're planning on using is the fact that hazards actually are allowed to be duplicated. You can have two hazards on the same square. Uh, so we were working yesterday on teaching our snakes to uh, respect that. Because we assumed it would be more fun to watch with snakes that could, you know, at least kind of understand the game mode. Um, but <laughs> my call out there that I wanted to give is mine is absolutely untested, so I have no idea if it actually works. Uh, but I did try to add this uh, last night slash this morning. I tried to add it, and I basically have uh, a couple test cases, so I know that it works like in a couple really basic situations. Oh, nice. Um, you... So is the map type snail mode with an underscore? Where did we set um, that? That's a great question. I was stealing it from the file name, but I don't think that's the right way. Oh, actually, and it's something else we need to rename here. It's this uh, this string here. Oh, you're right. Um, okay. So what do we want? Do we want dashes or underscores? Well, let's look at the other maps. That's that are a created. really good point. Uh, so Royale doesn't have an underscore. Um, hazards. It looks like they use... Uh, uh, underscores, lowercase underscores for the okay for the ID that works, and I think that matches the file name, so that makes sense. And it it looks like that's the name given in the metadata as well. So it looks like we should change our name. Oh, okay. Make the name uh, in the metadata match as well. Yeah, I'll do that. That works. Cool. Let's see. What did I do for solo maze? Okay, so that's totally fine. I know I'm not sure if it is wrong. My solo maze name is uh like title Casey with a space, but I'm not positive if that is, um actually means anything at the end of the day. We'll experiment. Yeah. Okay, so we got snail mode as the ID now. We're registering it. Anything else that we need before we just try it out? No, I think we're good to try it out. Um, and they did yeah. add a few more settings, min player, max players, but that looks fine, 1 to 16. And we're currently saying we can support pretty much any board size, which I think is also pretty sane. Yeah, I think we're ready to give it a shot. 
Okay, so it says failed to load map game map snail mode map not found. Okay. Oh. Are you seeing this on your screen? Um, actually, actually, I might be able to see our, the our, our code. Our heads are covering up the screen oh, as well. Okay. Let, let me get um. I can also move our heads if there's a better corner. Now, I think there's a way we figured out last time where you can open, uh, you can split the terminal. Mm, yes, that did work out well. So I can just split the terminal and move it to where it's uh, at our head level. Awesome. While you were doing that, I did remember one thing from when we were messing around yesterday, and I just added it to the script. I think we need that dot slash battle snake uh, once we build it. Uh, but I, I, I changed that in the script, so whenever you're ready, we can try running it again. And I do that see part. that terminal in my uh, VS Code share. Uh, see, one thing, I don't know, this seems to be working fine. When I was running it interactively, oh. I had to run EXE, but That's the fine. fact that it actually, it actually got to this point and ran... That is fair. Well, program. it might not Actually, have run, though. If you have the CLI yeah. installed locally, I'm wondering if it didn't run. I think I think what I did is I, I actually, yeah, I built it last night with EXE, and I think it ran the, the map from last night and not the updated one. That so, makes sense. Okay, let's try it yep. with um, test. Okay. All right, looks like we're game is no longer available. Something well, so we did get an error still in the CLI invalid character greater than looking for beginning of value. Um, but that might have been my ngrok. I got a my ngrok's throwing a weird 405 method not allowed error. Uh, not sure if that's actually the issue or not though but it definitely feels like it could be yeah it could be would you also be able to well we should be able to play in solo mode right um i did turn off i did remove solo from the flags but we can definitely add it back and try without uh my snake or something if, if we want to test that out okay um because we could i think we could add multiple Ziggies, if we mm, wanted to. Yeah, that's fair too. Uh, I think I can just like comment out. Oops, we both did it, but that's fine. Double <laughs> <laughs> comment. Uh, okay, let me let me see if that works, and then we can see if it's an issue with Hobbs or not. I'm um, going with maybe not. No, we got we got another error there. Yeah, it seems like it's the same. Invalid character one. looking for beginning of value, and we don't. Yeah, invalid character looking for beginning of value. That one I don't think I've seen before. I feel like this is a JSON encoding uh, issue. It does feel like that, right? Uh, what could we have added that would... Well, let's try something else. Maybe let's try changing it from... Let's. I'm going to change it from map snail mode to standard. I want to see if it's our maze or um, maybe not. I'm actually, I, yeah. I see the terminal, but I'm not sure I can type into it. So you want to try it again whenever? Yeah. Um, oh, oh, oh. Uh, so I actually... It didn't work either. But if we look at the warnings, I think something's telling us something wrong. Um, it says the URL, the URL has a dash dash name at the end of it for some reason. Like oh. it didn't separate the things with spaces or something. I forgot to add a comma oh, after that line. That could have done it. Oh, does do strings just concatenate if they're next yeah, to each if other? They're, if they're right next to each other in, in a list like this, they will just concatenate together, okay. which is kind of a... Um, oh, okay. So this is working. Awesome. Um, so let's... Game, and we're going to try doing... Let's we'll switch the map to our um, yep to our snail mode. And uh, I can bring Hobbs back. I think Hobbs will work, and maybe maybe just one Ziggy for the moment. Yeah, that works. Um, is it ready? Uh, save. Yes, now it is. 
Oh wait, it happened again. Uh, so it said, air reading response from Ingrok IO invalid oh, character okay. H looking for beginning of value. So that's a that's a me issue, or at least like a yeah. Why is Ngrok telling me that all of the methods weren't allowed? That one's an interest. Oh oh oh, because I just forgot how all my snakes work. That's 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 a that's easy slash a real issue. Um, my nothing lives on the root. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Uh, hovering Hobbs. Okay, okay. Now I think Hobbs should be ready at that URL. Okay, let's try it again. Hey, we're playing. Yay! Uh, Hobbs moved out of bounds. Oh, well. That's interesting. And they went, they went only up, which leads me to believe that... Oh, I wonder... Um, I might want to change my, uh, so I have my timeout value set, like I'm in the same region as the Battlesnake server. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let me change that real quick. Yeah, I think and I'm giving I'm it like set... 30 milliseconds of latency, which is probably not enough. Yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to set the timeout to 6,000 as well, just to give uh, Ziggy a better chance of actually doing it. Okay. That's mm. fine. I might just need to hard code something else because I'll take that full time if I don't. But I can do that. Just one minute. Oh, wait, not 6,600. Do, 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 do. Where are you used? Um, yeah, so we're going to do 500 minus that. Okay. Uh, do 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 do. You all come back. Are you working on? I on am. Right yeah, I'm compiling. I'm almost ready. With the new timeout settings. Do 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 do. If I wasn't worried about building in release mode, this would be much quicker. But I do kind of want to build in release mode. Yeah, I mean that would be nicer in terms of doing well, I suppose. Although neither snake might do very well. Very very fair. Um, I am ready now. I believe I believe we have no food spawns and. Uh, oh yeah. They will starve. <laughs> Reasonable. Um, I'm ready whenever though. My my compilation oh. finished. Okay. I see response. I see things. Oh, I see Hobbs making directional changes. So that's great. Awesome. Yep. I see 350 milliseconds. Yep. It's listening to that. Okay. Well, I think that's a good, we, we got the, we got the board working. It works. Yeah. Cool. Hooray. Woohoo. Step one down. Okay. So now I guess we actually have to look and see what, uh, is actually happening here yeah so you've done this before i have a bit um but i was making something quite a bit different but that's okay yes <laughs> I, I think this should be simpler i would hope i hope so i think so um okay so let's just read through what's happening okay so i guess i can give a little overview of like what these functions do really quick maybe um yeah so we have setup board which is going to get called the first time the the map is made to set it up. Uh, so this is where we'll want to like place snakes initially. Um, and like we could place initial food spawns or anything like that. Um, and so how they're doing it is they're just saying uh, error out if there's too many snakes. Um, and then I think they are leaning on using uh, rules that place snakes automatically, which is kind of just like how standard games just place the snakes uh according to i think they actually have a, an algorithm that decides where the snakes go um but mm -hmm. i think we can probably just leave leave that i don't think we need to mess with snake spawns too much there um, yeah definitely at least for a start for the you know the first iteration of the board we don't need to mess with that yeah um and so this is actually interesting though the the temp board state i think it's a pattern that's worth it explaining a tiny bit 
Um, mm -hmm. So how the editor works is you get an editor passed in to both of these functions to update mm -hmm. and set up. And you also get a board state passed in called the initial board state or last board mm -hmm. state. Um, you don't want to modify those board states. You want to call functions on the editor to make changes to it. So like the editor um, is in a different file we could probably look at if we wanted. It's in game map.go it defines the editor um if you f follow along with where i am um we have things like clear food and clear hazards add food add hazard remove food remove hazard and play snake oh i can i can i can follow you to the side i think oh yeah i forgot about that mode um oops Although with the with the text being as large as it is, we might not get a lot of real estate. Um, but uh, so here's the the editor interface that I was mentioning, um, and these are the methods that we can call to like make changes to the board. Okay. Um, but one thing that they're doing in empty or that we copied over in snail mode, which I think is a good pattern, it's one that I did a bit as well, is they make a temporary board state. So that they have mm -hmm. a board state that they can modify and do things with without having to go through the editor interface. Um, and then eventually at the end, they copy all of the snakes from their temp board state and use editor.placeSnake to put them on the, the real board. Um, and a reason for that is when you call editor methods, you don't have a way to look up that data again. Like, Got it. you can't read your own rights to, to use that, the, that terminology um so so basically you, the idea is you have a temp board that w you're going to use if you need to check the state of the new board for any kind of computation in your code you would use the temp board and then at the very end of your code you take the temp board and you run all the editor commands to actually apply those yep okay exactly um and like it there's a chance we don't need to do that, but I just found like, you know, uh, I think it's a pattern a lot of the, the maps use. And uh, if you do need to ask any questions about the board, that's kind of the, the best way to do it. Um, so. so I guess first off, I, well, I'm gonna try like, can we, can we make a hazard? Yeah. I just wanna place a hazard. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm gonna say editor, place, what is it? Place I believe hazard. Place hazard. Yep. Uh, it's actually add hazard. Add hazard. And then this is going to be a position. Yep. Mm -hmm. And. Um, oh, it's a point. Okay. Oh, it's called so, a point. Okay. Yep. And I just say like X zero. I don't know how, so, how going works anymore. I, I only know because I just copy and pasted this from um, my other code. So I'm just going to copy over you if that's okay. Oh, you got it, actually. That's that's what I was going to do. So you got it. Wait. Oh, 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 it's so close. It's here. I'm going to put it in a comment after and we can compare. I think you just need to lose the parens. Oh, yeah. yep. Okay. Oh, and comments aren't that character in Go. So uh, it wasn't a comment. Forward slash. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Okay. But that should work. And now... And actually, let's run this because I'm I'm curious to see. But what I think we're gonna see is this is gonna add a hazard every turn, so it's gonna start stacking. Oh, okay. But that'll be a fun one to to experiment with. What happened to Hobbs? Whoa. What? what Hobbs. What? Is... Hobbs lost his his styles. There was an error uh, in the very beginning. With server, and yet you're totally playing the game fine. Yeah, I wonder if that first one just had a had an issue, the, the like well, checking info. I think you're right in that if this is solid black, it probably means that it's adding a bunch of hazards. And actually, um, I can kind of look and see if I can confirm. Oh, that. look, the hazard list is growing. Oh, like, there you, you can go. See it actually in the terminal yep. here. That's I was gonna do the same thing yet looking at my uh, snake logs, but much easier um, in the CLI output. We can, we can clear hazards first. Yep. Clear hazards, and then and that again. 
And now I'm actually kind of curious if uh, Hobbs's colors come back. They did not come back. Interesting. It seems like maybe the the uh, uh, the move command might be returning a valid response, but the the base yeah. uh, URL might be invalid or something. And like I see responses to that base route here, but you know, not sure what's going on. It's not a huge deal. I'm gonna blame something like with game Ngrok. Is, game just froze. Oh. Oh, we got another invalid character in the error in our in our logs here. Oh yeah. Well, that's interesting. So, I mean, this is something that I feel like the CLI maybe should not do is that if the CLI detects an invalid response, uh, like it's not a valid JSON response, yeah. it will stop the game. Whereas usually you'd want the snake to just keep going straight. Yep. Yep. Um. But that's fine. Yeah. And, like, you know, I do see some JSON responses that look valid for me at the end. Hops is back. Oh, now the colors are back. Oh, yeah, because I see hitting the start endpoint, or, you know, the, the, the empty one. Yeah, Super interesting. and it looks like this is, this is staying light gray. Um, okay. Also, yep. we're, seeing, we're seeing only one element every turn, the zero, zero over here. Things are looking good. Um, can we... Can we put in like a default food spawn like the just use the standard food spawn rules yeah so i think what we'll want to do and that's something that's kind of nifty about how the code is structured i think we can like uh new up a standard game and use that for food spawning i'm actually just going to look and look at i'm looking at standard go and i'm just trying to see how they do food spawning um and maybe i'm following you so you can go, awesome. go ahead and Navigate there. Um, so here's where it updates board. So the standard update board is where we like check if food needs placement and place food randomly. So we might be able to just create a new standard board and call its food placement thing. Um, and I think I'm going to check hazard or the hazard map map because I think, yeah, see, so in its update for hazards, all it does is create a new standard map and call standards update board. So if we just want to use standard as the food spawning, I think we can mm -hmm. just create a new standard map, call its update board method, pass it, it our editor, and it should just work. Oh, interesting. So that would handle everything except for the hazard placement, and then we could add the hazard placement at the end? Yeah. Is that what you're thinking? Yep. OK, um, cool. Um, so then, yeah. Uh, and I can just cut. Yeah, exactly. One of us can copy this line. You got it. Oh, you. I was. I was gonna say no. No, oh, no. you got it. <laughs> we'll, we'll both paste it at the same. Yeah, time. Yeah, we'll get the double again, right? Um, now it is. It is. I'm assuming that this actually could return. Oh, error. I think you're right. Yep. I forget about this in Golang, no, but you're totally right. Error is not equal to nil. Error. Nice. I feel like this little pattern here is just like go in a nutshell. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> and neither of us do go uh, as our primary thing, so we'll all we'll struggle yeah. along together. <laughs> I've 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 written a fair amount of go, and actually, you've written quite a bit of it now with your map. As I was well. gonna say that's yeah, um, that's my most go, but you know, enough. Okay, so we should see now. Uh, we should see now the standard food spawns happening. Yeah. Oh, I see food. Um, yep, food is spawning. We still have that one hazard in the corner. Nice. Uh, how much? How much health uh, damage per turn are, is that doing? Ooh, so that's a CLI option. Um, but we also, I think, we aren't using the hazard map. So, you know, our update board, I doubt, is even checking for hazard damage. Um, because the standard map doesn't have hazards, and that's probably in the hazard map. So, mm -hmm. like, instead of standard, we could change that to newing up a hazard map. But then I think it would also place hazards. Um, so now we might be in a bit where we need to do some more custom coding or something. Okay. Because um... I think, I'm going to check, in hazards... We oh, could wait. look at Royale mode, and we could see how they handle. Oh, Royale! Uh, yeah. 
Or is that, that would be an example of of um so I'm in let's see update board on Real. They they do use standard map um to populate use food. Standard, use use standard map to populate food. Yep. Uh Royal uses the current turn to generate hazards, not the previous turn. Um so I might have been wrong though, because I don't see anything in Royale about taking damage because of hazards. So maybe that is in standard, and I just didn't know that, which is totally sane or possible. Um. So I guess like we did see someone go through a hazard in that game. Did it actually do damage? Yeah, let's let's take a look. Pause. Yeah. Yeah. Look at that. Okay. It took a change off. I think that's about the de the default damage, probably the fourteen. The fourteen. Yeah. And I think we can plus one. set that in like the CLI options. Um, it's not a map option. They've talked about making it one, but right now it's part of the the CLI options. Yeah. Um, I'm okay leaving it at fifteen for now yeah. because. What that means is that if the max damage would be, let's say, seven would kill you instantly. So maybe that should be what what they default to when a snake is on top of them, and then um, one is removed every turn. Yep. So we could we could operate on that where it's like seven, and then take away one every turn. Yep. So yeah, we talked about a few different things. Uh, so we talked about just removing a hazard every turn from the tail, and we also talked about like more of a random random chance that they disappear style. Which one do you think yeah. we want to start with, or first uh, or whatever? Let's do, let's do the stack. Uh, so first thing we're gonna do is ensure stack of seven for. Uh, for the tail segment of each snake. Yep. So we're going to say for the, I think we can do last board state. Yeah. Um, it's probably something like uh, this that I have highlighted up a little bit. Uh, actually, wait, it would be for uh, snake. Yep. Yep, and I think we want, uh, like, I think the first thing that it loops over is actually like an integer, a number. I, and I think I'm just like, we ignored it up top, but either way, yep. Um. Oh yeah, up here. Yep. Yep. I can see you highlighting off the top of my. Oh, it screen. was just off the top, so you couldn't actually see. Uh, That's fair. <laughs> Good. Okay, so now we have. Uh, so what we want to do is we want to find the tail of the snake. Yep. Um, so tail is going to equal snake body. And then um, can we just negative one it? I don't know. Go uh, index. I don't know if go does negative one or if we have to do the length. Oh, I think this. we might have to do the length thing just because I kind of remember having to do that. Okay, so we're gonna say length of snake body minus one. Yeah. Is that how it works. Yeah. I think so. Yeah, length. Yep, minus one. Yep, I'm looking at my old old and code. We need to add seven hazards here. Or, hmm. actually, no. We we are clearing hazards, so yep. that means we actually need to do something mm. up here. We are going to. Yeah. We're gonna need to store uh, hazards uh, so we can. Uh, decrement by one decrement stack. Yep. Of hazards by one. Then for the tail, we can add a hazard for. I think we'll just need to add seven. I think so. Yeah. So like for. How do you do that in Go? Is it a while loop? Or... Oh yeah, that's fair. I think I would have just done go count, range seven, but I'm not actually loop. sure. Uh, yeah, they want us to do a for loop. Here. For if count is greater than seven, I'm probably doing this wrong. Here, ready? You want me to pay something in quick? Boom. 
Oh, there we go. Seven. Uh, we don't really care what I is, so less than and equal to is fine. And then, yeah. And actually, we're not even using I, but... No. Uh, oh, but we probably need it because we're actually incrementing it. So even though we're not going to use it in the body, we actually are using it. Okay, so this should... So now I think we should just have a hazard on our tails all the time if we just ran this. Yeah, and I, I suspect it would disappear the next turn because we're... Yep, um... that was what I was thinking too. Oh, look. There's like oh, a black blob on the tail. Perfect. And sometimes Hobbs loses his customizations, but that's fine. Just kind of funny. So I think what's happening with Hobbs is that the first time the server hits it, it times out. And then once it's warmed up, maybe. Oh. Does it have a warm up? Uh, well, I could believe that, that like, you know, something between my ngrok, like, I we've got lots of proxies going on here. I could believe it's getting some timeouts initially. I wish it yep. displayed timeouts properly over here. Well, I, and actually, um, I see in the logs that are covered up by your board opening for you, uh, but that it looks like it got an invalid character in my initial response. So, yeah, something must have timed out and sent non-JSON, and it yeah. just didn't like that. Okay, but it would almost be nice if it didn't cover up the tail like it's doing now. Yeah. Like visually, it would be a little little more pleasing if it appeared after the tail, so you could still see the snake tail. That is tr that is pretty um, reasonable, yeah. But I think that would be trickier, so let's not worry about that for now. Yeah, I was gonna say that seems like something we can come back to for sure. Um, I agree. Yeah. It feels a little trickier. So now we need to basically store all the hazards. And yep. Oh, uh, actually, here's a here's a trick. <laughs> we don't need to store the hazards because we never change last board state. Last board state. Oh, you're right. You're just right. Always is like it's there. Yeah, editor commands don't change last board state. But we still need to know, like, if, for example, your tail already has three hazards on it, you don't want to add another seven. That would increment it up to ten. We want to mm. max it out at seven. So we do need to count the total number of hazards on each square. Well, that's interesting, though, right? Like, I think it it definitely could be sane to do what you're saying and max it at seven. But we don't have to, and that could be an interesting game mechanic, right? You go you're right. back you over it and it stacks more. Yeah. I don't know. Like, it's, it's, okay. I think it's okay. reasonable let's, let's either way. The simplest thing we could do is what you're saying is we could increment over the... Um, yep. So let's say this is... Uh, we can use the uh, last board state. Mm-hmm. Uh, for for this, unless I don't know, we can we can do that. Yeah. For now. Yeah. Um. And then we need to. It does probably doesn't matter with the order we do it in right now. So we're gonna. Yep. Add hazard. Add 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 back existing hazards. Okay, and then we're gonna loop over them. So, yep. Order hazard range hazards. Uh, last board state hazards. Yes. Uh, we're just gonna say editor hazard hazard. So I think this will just make hazards never go away, which is. Oh, good point. You know, yeah. like if we're just testing, that's probably fine. Um, but I think we're going to want to like do like a group by count from that hazards array, right? Like I want to know there were yeah. five on position one or something. You know yeah, you're I mean? right. Um, you're totally right. And I was um, Googling and it doesn't really seem like Go is going to give us that function for free. So I think we're going to have to write the counting thing ourselves, which isn't hard. Just Just got to do it. We're definitely leaving a trail. We are leaving a trail. I like that. A deadly trail. Now, it, now it's actually a little bit like, um, what's it called? Yep. 
that was over quick. <laughs> I think Ziggy made a mistake here, though. Like, clearly, they could survive longer. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, Hobbs is also oh, time. Oh, that's actually, Hobbs, and he's timing out. But what, what Ziggy's thinking, though, is Ziggy can go right and then up again because it doesn't know that this square will oh, have hazards yep. on it. Wait, is Hobbs moving directions and getting timeouts? Because that's amazing. I don't know how Hobbs is managing it. And and what? Yeah, what? What's this red exclamation point next to Hobbs? I just don't under. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> I'm assuming that's for the first one that that's supposed oh. to get the customization information. And then it just never cleared it or whatever. Yeah. Okay, I could buy that. Super interesting okay. though, but we're we're at least doing the hazard tails. So we're we're getting there yeah. a little bit. Okay. Um. So. Okay. What do we got next? So I think we want to do this counting thing. So we want to like yeah count the 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 number of hazards or a given position uh so i think i want to do something like this i just copied this from the internet uh but mm -hmm. this is going to be a rules dot point can we use a structure as a key in a map um go might be yelling at me so maybe not uh i don't actually know what it's mad about uh what are you mad about go uh, no variable, no new variables on left no side. No new variables on the left side oh. of, of... Can't use as a value in assignment. Can't use value of map. Yeah. yeah, so I think you're right. So what what I think we could do is we can write a little function up here that's basically like hash, and we're going to take a, a point, mm -hmm. which is the rule dot point. And we're going to return uh, integer, for example. Yep. And then you can take, uh, what is it? It's point uh, x yep. times, no, plus point y times height. Yep. Um, and then we need to take a height here as well. Yep. And so now we're going to have a map of int to int. Um, I think yeah. it's just mad that I'm not using it, but that's fine. I want something like this again for each hazard. Um, I don't actually know how to... Oh, no. Things get initialized to zero by default in Go, so I probably don't need to worry about setting things to zero initially. Can I just go M at hash of point plus plus? Copilot wrote most of that uh, code for me. No, actually, I don't think... I don't think that works, but that's not unreasonable. Um, oh, and this isn't hazard dot point, so like that's just wrong, copilot. But that's okay. Also, it's still um, very mad at me. Yeah. So oh, while you work oh. on that, I need to actually take a short break. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, I'm going. If you need to, to take a break, uh, you can go ahead and do yeah, that. But just... if not, then you can keep working and. Uh, yeah, you I'll know. Be back in a minute. Yeah, I'm gonna change. Take your break. I'm gonna change stuff. Uh, when you get back, Josh, you're not gonna be on stream. So uh, let me know when okay. you're ready. Sounds good. Okay. Oh, nice. You wrote a dehash function. Yeah, I did like a tiny bit before um, I took a break as well. Um, so yeah, I wrote a dehash function because I um, needed to use it again. So I went back to trying to add them back from our, our hash count thing um, and realized I needed to uh, convert them. Back to yeah, you're one. right. <laughs> Why is it saying that it's... Oh. Uh, what I'm fixing right now? Use. Yeah. Yep. There you go. Yep. I probably could have just you... named my variables right or something, but it, it's okay. <laughs> you fixed the, uh, the, the little yellow squiggly line. Yep. And then so one thing that I didn't change and Go is not mad about anymore is just this plus plusing the hazard counts. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, let's test it out and see how it works. Um, yeah, the other thing we didn't do, which is fine just so we know, is uh, we did not change it so they 
Uh, I didn't do one minus the count. It's the full, uh, full count still. So that at least is what I expected. But we should probably do a minus one there so that they actually start going away. Yeah, that is a good call. Um, and that would be right here. I just want to go down to count minus one uh, so that we don't do that. Okay, I think we're good to try that again. I just added a minus one down here. So this is interesting. I didn't realize that you could do a plus plus in a go map. I guess it worked, right? Because like we kind of saw it. I mean, yeah, we were seeing it and it didn't throw an error, and I think it would have. Yep. Well, okay, so so we're at, we're counting the number of hazards, and we're okay. That's what this section is doing. Yep. We're adding back the existing hazards. Oh, one less than before. Okay, hazard hash count. Oh, and because of the way Go maps are working, you're thinking that count will be zero. Or no, actually, it probably will just not, it'll not even iterate over the ones where count doesn't exist. Yep, I think so, because I think we only put the ones with hazard hash in there. So I think this is just yep. the key values of the counted ones. Um, okay, so this should be uh, should be ready to go. Let's try I think so. Um, we have to wait, I like, see oh. them getting lighter. Oh, look at that. Oh, that's great. That's pretty fun. Uh, so we're done. <laughs> we did it. Ta-da! <laughs> Mission accomplished. Um, except actually, like, is the counts right? One, two, like, I don't have, Hobbs doesn't have a trail of seven there, right? Something might be messed up. Well, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Ziggy's looks good, but like Hobbs has only got four. What happened here? Did did it, oh? I'm gonna pause the game. Oh, it's yeah. Um. Like, it's that. So at this point, one, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. What's what's this one? Yeah, down and what, here? well, we I think we did cross there, so maybe that was like a real. Oh no, we didn't actually cross though. So oh, here's here's the issue. When you eat food, oh, it doubles your tail is in the same location twice. Yeah. So what we need to say is, uh, we only add. I think this is the problem where if you if you're adding now we're adding fourteen uh, hazards yep. to that location, and that's why it takes so long to dissipate. Yep. So I think that I'm one. Not sure why why your tail is behaving weirdly. Yeah, I do think those are separate, but that's very strange. Agreed. Oh, um, I think this is also an issue where you're eating food here. Hmm. I there is food eating happening. That is true. Yeah. You eat food here, your tail stays the same. It didn't actually. That becomes a fourteen. Eat that food yet, though. You eat another there one. There, I ate the food. That's why there's two, there's two, two spots here, here and here that are doubled up. But it does seem like the other ones are decaying faster than they should, right? Well, what I think it is is because your tail actually hasn't your tail's only oh. moved five spaces because you've eaten food twice or three times in seven turns or whatever i got gotcha. you yeah. yep yeah. yep okay so, so maybe it is just that one bug okay i think we can handle that though that sounds that sounds doable so maybe what we do down here is we say we need to check the, the count on that square so we can say yeah, so what do you what do we, what do we think the fix here? What are we trying to do to like actually fix it here? What I'm imagining is that we check the count on this square if the count is and we only increment it increase it until it reaches 7. You just want to do the max at 7? That makes sense. Well, I think that's the simplest way to get something working. The other thing I was thinking is if we want to like do just this double tail thing, we could check if like 
minus one and minus oops uh minus one and minus two are at the same spot and special case it there yeah we could say tail uh, or almost tail i don't know <laughs> uh yeah almost tail also in yeah they would be they would be camel case so almost tail is going to be yep. snake body we're going to go ahead and assume that snakes always have a length of at least three. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, and also, if you don't have snakes of length three, the board repo does some really funny things. So uh, if you're making maps, always try to make your snakes at least length three. Yeah. Just as an FYI. Yeah, you ran into that, I think, when you were doing the maze, right? Yeah. If uh, In that GitHub PR, um, we, they found some really interesting things that happen when you have a one or a two body snake. When you have a one the snake's head direction never knows where to go and i think it just looks one direction the whole time so it like moves sideways which is pretty hilarious um and then if you have a snake body of length two you can just go back and forth between two positions and tail chase indefinitely uh well you know until you starve out um but that one also looks really really funny Oh, that's super interesting. I didn't yeah, think about that. I didn't either until I saw it, right? Like with two, you just like keep switching positions and it just looks really funny. It's not like wrong, okay. I guess, but it's funny. Okay, so I think this this works, right? It looks like it. We're I saying think so. If, if almost tail equals tail, so this is basically saying double tail. And we're just going to uh, not do anything, which I think will so I think that makes sense. Double double tail uh means that the tail will stay on the same square for more than one turn. So we only want to spawn hazards uh, if we, or if, uh, if they're. Or, or just so we don't want to spawn hazards? Just. Don't want to spawn hazards. Yeah. I think that makes sense to me. And yeah. I think this will look a lot nicer. I think I think you're right though also that the Hobbs uh tail not existing was really just the same thing, just looked weirder. Okay. There we go. And I guess we need to eat some food now to really tell if it if it helped us out. Wait, are you Hobbs seeing has Hobbs no having health? What is happening? Hobbs... I think <laughs> I think because the the get customization endpoint timed out, what I think happens is that uh, it just like it broke basically the has UI. no color for the UI to display. Oh, and so, so we don't I know, see. We well, don't know what Hobbs' health is. Well, the tail thing is working really well though. Yeah, and I think we probably got some kind of an error. Oh, did so we freeze there? Like the, game, the game ended. Gotcha. Um, what does the log uh, say? Oh, yeah, invalid character. The same one we've been getting this whole time. Uh, but the okay. the slime trails are looking pretty good there, though. Yeah, I think it's looking great. If yeah. only there was a way to make the tail go on top of the... Uh, yeah, how do we... Hmm... Or how do we delay it one turn? Right? How, that's what I was trying to think out. I don't have an amazing idea there yet, but like, how can we delay it one turn? Because this looks really weird when you eat a food and your tail goes from like no hazard to full hazard. Like right away. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I hadn't even I mean, noticed that one. That one's weird for sure. You can see that the, the double tail check is working at least. That's true though. Yeah. Um. So that's cool. Yeah. So we don't want there to... Hmm, this is an interesting one. I'm not sure what exactly we want to do here. Yeah, I think this is one where we need to remember some state from uh, from last time, right? I think so, right? It definitely seems like we're at a we're at a state problem. I was really, like, kind of hoping this whole map would avoid this problem. <laughs> right, the way of, like, taking a stack and then diminishing it by one every time. Yeah, exactly. Oh, and that's where it ends because we, we, yeah. We had a timeout or something yeah. or some air. This is kind of cool looking. I like it. No, I like it a lot. I do. Yeah. I, I do think it would look a lot nicer if we could see the tails though. 
Um, yeah. Oh, well, we could try what you had thought of for storing state yesterday. Yeah, and... let's put hazards off the map and uh -huh. see if we can use that to store. Uh... So basically, what we need to do is we need to store the tail location from last turn for each snake. Yep. And, well... What we really need to do is we need to restore store the tail location from last turn for each snake if it's not a double tail. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. And so I think the first thing to do will just be to confirm that the uh, rules seal or the rules do not break when you have hazards off off map. Yep. Yep. Because um, out of bounds hazards would definitely. Well, I guess well, we can just check. I was gonna say uh, we'll yeah we'll need to change our code too, but with what we have written, something weird will happen. Check for out of bounds hazard. Yep. So we can say editor add hazard. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah, you have to make the point. Yep. And we can say x is 100. And then. Okay. Oh, and I guess we can just look at the CLI-ish output and see if it's there. Just for, like, checking it. Oh, yeah, I wasn't even thinking about that. I was just seeing if the game aired out. It doesn't break. Um, uh, I see a 100-100 in there. Oh, nice. Yeah, I do. It's moving, but I see it. Okay. Yeah. Well, ta-da. Cool. We have our state. <laughs> yes. That was easy. I like that. <laughs> that was amazing. Um, uh, so now we just have to actually like figure out how we want to implement this. I think doable for sure. We just have to yeah. okay. make decisions. So what we're going to say is we're going to say, well, number one, we need to clear hazards. When we add them back on, we need to discard out of bound hazards. Uh, so. Because if we don't, the state will just continue to be saved. Yep. Mm-hmm. So we need to add a check here. Let's just, I'm just going to comment in a couple things. Yep. Uh, discard out of bound. Actually, wait. Yeah, we do. We can discard them in our hazard counts because that's yep. what we're using to add them back in. Yep. But we can keep them by referencing, or we when we need to, we can reference the last board state. Yeah. Um, and actually, let's just go ahead and say we're going to have a new... Make a new whatever to store something in and we're going to say uh and track uh or add add non double tail locations uh to a slice yep um so the go thing for tail locations is going to be uh, use the oh, make yep. keyword to make a slice. And then you um, pass it the type, right? What's the type of a slice? Hmm. Is it... Well, um, I think the type here is, is do we want... Oh, I see. You have to give it... Oh, okay. Yep, yep, yep. I gotcha. I forgot make didn't automatically make a slice. It makes anything. Okay. Um, uh, expects two or three arguments. Okay, here it is. So you can make it a thing of int uh, zero. What, what's the first item? Okay, uh, this allocates an array of size 10, returns oh, slice of length zero with capacity, capacity 10. So what we want to say is we want to return a thing of, of length zero, and we don't need to set a max capacity to something because we don't actually know. Yep. Actually, we could set the max capacity to the length of uh, board snakes. Oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's that's going to be a maximum that we'd ever have of tails. We yep. will have sometimes fewer than that, but that doesn't, that's okay. Yep. Um, and then we need to discard out of bounds, add to tail locations. Yep. Uh, oh, right. We're using the out of bound ones to track tail locations. Yep. Um, so, Maybe what we can do is we can have like a little uh, a function that's basically like store uh, tail location. And this one's going to take a point, right? Yeah. Like a 
point. And it also needs to take the width or the uh, I think it needs to take the width and height, right? Maybe. Oh yeah, so that we can definitely put it off board. Is that what you're thinking? Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Mm -hmm. Oops. Uh, thank you for fixing that. Oh, and then yeah. it's going to return. It's not going to return anything. Um, um, if we don't want it to return anything, that makes sense. But we probably will also need to pass it the editor. Um, if it's actually going to do the storing, putting it on the board. Oh, yeah, you're right. You're right. Uh, oh. Hmm. Yeah, what do we what do we want this function to do? Do we want it to actually like put the thing on the board or do we want it just to return a point off board to then put it on later? Let's have it return a point. Okay. Uh and then we need another function that's basically gonna be uh like get get tail yeah. okay or get previous tail location. And this is also hmm, this one. What is it going to take? I'm, I'm wondering. Is uh, it... we need to, yeah, we need an out of bounds point. So we're going to pass it the out of bounds point. Okay. And th so basically, this is just our. This is basically just going to be our hash dehash. But instead of hashing it, we're just going to move it to an out of bounds point, basically. And we might need the width and height as well. Yep, I think so. So what I'm imagining is that we can just push, we can basically say, like, we have our board uh, here, mm -hmm. and then we're just going to offset it one board to the side. Yep. So we probably don't need oh, height. Yep. We probably just need width, right? Mm -hmm. um, or I think we only need one or the other, um, and we pass yeah. height to other things, so maybe we'd be consistent. Just uh, our, yeah. our hashing so, functions. So basically, we're going to push it up by the height. Yeah. So it's going to be above the space of the board by one. Yep. Um, okay. Yeah, and they should be relatively straightforward, I guess, right? Like. So if we're storing the tail location, we're going to be returning. Uh, yeah, and I'm just going to do this one. Point. Fills the point. Um... Nice. Yeah. Easy peasy. Um, okay, so we need to discard. We should probably do an out of bounds check, right? Yeah, but I definitely think we will want that. Yep. There's probably one already, to be honest, somewhere in the. Um... Oh, there might be. Yeah. But we can implement it. Yeah, exactly. Now, uh, might be faster than trying to find the existing one, unless you want to go searching for it. No, I, I like writing it ourselves. We got this. Um, I think we are going to need height and width or a game state, you know, or something. Yeah. You know what? Maybe we should just do uh, width and height as W and H. Sure. <laughs> also in Go, I don't know if you knew this, but you, you, can, you don't have to add uh, the type hint if they're the same type. Oh, whoa. So it, like, so it takes the like, last one? Yeah, you do a comma separated list, and then all of the two things in the comma whoa. separated list will get the int type. I did not know that. That's nifty. Yeah. So I think I thought that was a typo a, sec a, a few minutes you ago. Can write it, you can write it the way you're thinking as well. It's just a little more verbose. You can, you can save save yourself some, some characters. I like that. No, mm -hmm. I definitely didn't know that. That's nifty, though. So OK, so we got our. We, out of or we got our function. Uh, I'm also going to call this P. Nice, especially for these nice small helpers. No reason to be. <laughs> I know. <laughs> also, Go actually, if you look at the official Go style, they tend to favor small or short variable names. So yeah, we're not even we're not even straying from we're, idiomatic Go. I think we're writing good Go, or at least idiomatic. As a matter of fact, exactly. I believe that this kind of this kind of lengthy. Uh, thing is probably a little little long for go yeah that's fair we could figure out a way to shorten it up yeah i don't know i don't have a good idea for that right off the bat okay so yeah. 
We need to return uh, if p is x is less than zero or p dot y is less than zero or p dot x is greater than or equal to height. No, width. Oh, yep. Or p dot y is greater than or equal to height. height. Yep. Okay. So then back down in here in our update board, we want to do something like if out of bounds, good for you, Copilot. If it is out of bounds, we want mm -hmm. to, uh, so like off board tail or something is going to be our store tail location. Yep. Um, and then I guess we probably then want to do editor. Uh, oops. Stop. Well, I think, I think we're going to add that to the tail location. Oh, we, we created our array. Uh, yep. We're, we have a slice that we can add them to. And I think just yeah. appending is right, right? That is correct. Yep. And I didn't actually Copilot. do that. That was, yeah, exactly. Copilot knows, knows its stuff. That's also why I really like Copilot for languages that I'm not super duper familiar with. Cause like it will just do the right thing a lot of the time. Yeah. Um, I've heard that it's quite good for Go as well because uh, Go tends to have very similar uh, like style across the board. And so it's mm. better at guessing Go because. There's more examples of similar code out there. Yeah, like the appending to an array or, you know, that's common across all of them. It was able to get that really easy. Not that yeah. that's a hard one, but it, it definitely worked well. But it's interesting that it actually did screw up and add hazard dot point. Yeah, it's um, done that same thing a few times where it's tried to call dot point on our point, which like it's yeah. easy to catch, but it is weird. Yeah, so it's not perfect. No, it's good because otherwise, you know, that's one step towards replacing. He he he. Replacing us with AI. Exactly. <laughs> um, um, okay, so we're going to... Well, one thing we haven't done here is we need to check for uh, non devil tails. So uh, I think what we should do is we should add like a little... Uh, well, so what I check. was thinking is if we just don't store the double tails off board... We don't have to check when we bring them back. This helper sounds great, though. Anyways, we always good to have a helper. Well, I was thinking we could just write a little helper that returns a uh, boolean if yep. it's a double tail. Yep. I think that would. I think useful. that's helpful. Anyways, we already have that logic um, somewhere else. Yeah, we're doing the almost tail and the tail. Yep. It's cleaner to have that as a separate. Um, yeah, for sure. And then we can just return this, I think. Mm, yep. Nice. Nice. I think it's telling us that we don't use it. I think so, yeah. But now we can say if... If double tail. If double tail, snake... Uh, continue. Yep. I, I did it to where I um, pass a what is it called reference? Reference, yeah. reference to the snake. I'm assuming we don't want to copy it when we pass it to a function by value. Seems sane. And then we can move. We get rid of this. This can go down here. Oh, we do still need tail. You're right. I was going to delete it, but you're right. Uh, yeah. Well, actually. This might be a place where that, I think we're going to change that in a second, but to keep the code correct from before, that's right. Um, I think, though, that instead of adding the tail to the board here, this is where we want to add it off board. Yes, that is a good point. So, like, maybe we do something like this again. We do off board tail where we, and then we add off board tail. We add hazards. To, oh, actually, no. Actually, no, we don't even need to, yeah. We probably we need to add the... one, though, right? Well, what we need to do now is we need to iterate over the tail locations that are off-board, which we stored up here in the uh, in the slice. Yep. So I think 
Well, so I think those are different parts of code, because right here is where we want to remember. This is where we need to remember yep. what the tail was. Yep. So we need to store it yep. off board, but probably just once. Uh, you're right. Yep. Good, good call. And then below that, now we're going to have a new section. Yeah. And this is going to be, uh, we're going to read off board tails and apply uh, seven... Yep. Hazards. Um, right. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's right. And we're we're not maxing it at seven. Like they can go above seven potentially. That's at least what, that we've what we're thinking. Decided so far. <laughs> okay. So now we're gonna say four. Uh, uh, what would this be? Uh, A point. Yep. Or for P. Yep. In range, and then we can do off board. Wait, I think it's just called tail that? locations, though. Tail locations. Maybe could get a better name. Yep. And then that finally is going to stop that append from being yellow, I think. Yeah. And then now we can say for. So what was the. Walk me through the. Oh, the yeah. Syntax. So it's. Oh. We, we do have it somewhere else. It's this. Yep. Okay, so we initialize it. It's kind of like a C or C++ style. Yeah, like a, like a traditional for loop instead of a for each loop. It's been so long since I wrote something like this. For an old... Uh, oh, wait. This is just going to be seven, seven, right? Yep. I, I remember JavaScript actually used to have... Um, yeah. Used to not have like the for each be in the earlier versions of JavaScript either. Yeah, yeah. Um. Okay. And then we're going to do editor add hazard. And actually, I do think we want add hazard here, but I feel like we're messing up our on and off board translations. Um, because if it's off board, this is wrong. Um, up top, if you scroll up a bit, um, mm -hmm. line 104. When we know it's out of bounds, we're currently calling store tail location, but I think this yep. wants to be get previous tail location. It wants to decode it. Because we oh. already know it's off board. So we want to onboard it. <laughs> right? Because this is reading things that were off the board. And now we want them to be on the board so that what we can add them as hazards in a second down okay so when we get a previous tail location it returns the point on the board yep it reads it off board and then returns it on board yep. okay so you're right okay so now we're getting an on board yep this is great i love it and then i think um, at the bottom we were just doing yeah because there's no conversion at online 140 we just add that hazard right. so i yep. think i think that's good okay well, yeah. let's try it out and uh anyone in chat if uh we're building a custom map for Battlesnake right now, if you're just joining. Yeah. Um, which hopefully you'll see here in a minute. OK, well. It's not working. Yeah. Exactly. It is definitely not working exactly. <laughs> that is that is definitely accurate. Uh, it feels well, like I would it's... say it is working, but it's working the same as it was yeah. before. So that's weird. Okay, let's let's go ahead and, and, and look at the output and see if yep. we can tell what's happening. Oh, we just didn't save our source file. Oh, that'll do it. Do you notice we still have that 100 to 100 in the output? Oh, nice. Good catch. Well, actually, we should just remove that from the code. Um, oh. But now we're saved and without our 100 to 100. Oh. I think it's working. I think we did it. Well, okay, there we go. It just took a sec to keep going, but that's fine. Uh, I think we frozen, I think we just broke but... we broke the game again. Okay, it's fine. I'll close out some of these guys and. I yeah, I end up like this with so many of these once once it gets started. Uh, that's a I think lot of CLI output. Yeah, there there's too many items oh. here. And they're all the same. It's 145 repeated like infinity. Why is it even 100? 100 is not even like a special number. Oh, no. I bet that was from before I removed the 100, 100 check, and it was trying to on oh. and off board. It was just getting very confused. Okay, okay. 
Fingers crossed. Let's... <laughs> you saved the change now. I think so. Let's try it one more no time. No more circle. We got the X this time up top. Okay. Oh, this is good. Yep. This is good. We can still see our actual snake tails. Yes. That was it. That worked. Okay. I think I think this is just because Ziggy doesn't. Why is Ziggy doing this? Oh, that is interesting. I actually didn't even pay attention to the fact that Ziggy so, should just so go right. Ziggy, Ziggy is assuming basically that they can go left, up, left. Yeah. And that's a safe route because, because they don't know, know the... of the slime. Yeah. It knows that when there's hazard on the board, it can't run into them, but it doesn't predict the slimes. Yeah, we need to. You'd have to do some custom. Uh, and then on this turn, there. Ziggy realizes they're 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 dead, right? Like it's yeah. it's not this turn. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. But at this at this turn, they still assume that it's a totally fine option, and they can go up and around. Yep, yep. So yeah, well, that would be you know what if, if this gets in the fall league, <laughs> things to things will need to improve on. Oh, Hobbs Ooh. Hobbs has customizations this we time. We have we have the awesome uh, the colored the colored color. ones. Ooh, Hobbs went went through the slime trail there. Yeah. Hobbs really likes going through hazards is when they know there's a food on the other side. They're a big fan of that move. I mean, it, it's a perfectly valid uh, way, to, way to go. We might want to replay and just check that these hazard damages are getting applied correctly. Okay. Because Hobbs keeps going through them, and I just feel like they're not losing the health I would have expected them to. Does the game rule actually work in terms of applying double hazards? I thought we had determined it did at one point, but uh, I guess we're about to find out. Oh, we broke okay. it. But uh, what's happening over here? We just got yep, our normal. Yeah, that invalid character. Yeah. Um, oh. I gotta pause before I can go back. So. You're wondering if, the, it, yeah, it was pretty okay, early. They go through like that right there, or was it gone by the time they went through? Because they just didn't take okay. any extra damage. So I think what's interesting though is because if the hazard is applied the same, like basically the head moves in and then the hazard is applied. I wonder if it's in that order. I think that's safe. Yeah. Yeah, so it actually never it never moves into hazard. Well, the so hazard go, is appearing go on its head. Just a little bit before for Hobbs, because I think Hobbs does it like three turns ago here, right there. This one. So you're saying this up move? It does. Take oh, it away does. A big okay, chunk. I just didn't notice that when I was watching the game live. So we're all good there. Okay. I don't know how many. One, two, three. So that's forty-five. Uh, how many hazards are there? That feels reasonable. Taking I'm just three, guessing. Yeah. 3 times 15 would be 45, and that feels like about 45 that was lost from the, the bar. Yeah, so I mean, it is a bit okay. interesting. I think as a viewer, it's a bit unintuitive that when you see this happening, it feels a little weird. Like, it seems yeah. like that should be applying damage, and also just covers up the snake's head. Uh, we, could do, we could do a fun thing where we store up a, like, if this situation would were to happen... Um, yeah. Well, I guess. Hmm. Well, so like basically, we could we could say like apply hazards, but but don't um. But don't do it immediately. So basically, like the snake would look clean. Actually, yeah, it would basically be saying don't apply hazards in this situation because you're doing a direct tail chase. Yeah, and I guess we would. I think we can know that state, right? Like, we can know. Because basically what we're saying is even if we wanted to put a hazard on the board because of, of the off tail stuff, like we, we had saved a position, but don't apply mm -hmm. it yet unless the head's not you can there. Say don't don't apply it unless the head is not there. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's not gonna damage the snake anyway, so it's just visually confusing. Yep. Well, so that I think that's totally sane. The interesting thing is, would we want it to be there afterwards for the trail? Or do we just want to skip it? Well, it'll it'll get there eventually when the tail comes across. Oh, because they're tail chasing. Okay, yeah, yeah, I like it. I'm down. The tail will have to go across the square, yep. so I think we could do that check. Okay, so the check we need to do is, um, and we should. What we need to do is before we apply 
it, we need to check that it does not equal one of the snake's heads. Yep. And I think we should do it for any snake head. Seems sane, at least for a first version. Yeah, so we could say for... Um, yep. Snake in range snakes. Uh, the head is going to be... Actually, we, we get a snake head by default, I believe. We can say... Oh, it's, yeah. Mm -hmm. If p.x equals... Oh, actually, I don't think we do... Uh, we can just do body at zero. Um, okay. But, yeah, their struct that they store uh, doesn't have the head that you get in JSON. That's something they must add at the API level. Okay. That's fine. We can do... Yeah. Uh... I, I keep wanting, like, an equals function, but I'm not sure their one exists. Yeah, yeah. And that's just something, you know, look, coming, writing more Rust recently, it's interesting that we have to, like, decompose this to check equality. Okay, the other thing we need to do is we need to... Uh, we need to exit out of the... Or we need to continue the other loop, so we need to, like, say... Well, I think... Can is, we just not do a... Con can you... Well, continue will continue out of this inner loop. Oh, and that's exactly what we don't want. Yeah, you're right. I gotcha. Yep. Mm -hmm. I'm imagining that we can store the state up here and then set is add equals true. Yep. Break. And then we can say if is head continue. Yep. I'd like when uh, a lot of languages, I'm not sure if Rust have this, they have a way to label a loop. So oh. that you can say, like in um, in Zig, you could say this would be like the outer loop. I think it's something like that. And then you say break out of break that one. Outer. Oh, that's cool. And then it allows you to break out of the outermost loop. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah, I don't. That's not something I'm uh, have used in Rust, so I kind of think it doesn't exist. Um, but I could be wrong for sure. That's nifty, though. I like that. Both of the previous languages I've worked with, Nim and Zig, have that feature. Oh, wow. That's really cool. Yeah. Okay. But and yeah. I like it. It's, good. it's a good feature. Yeah, no, that makes a lot of sense, especially for this, yeah, exactly what we were doing here. This We had three. They weren't all nested, but we had three different loops. Would have been nice to be able to name them. Yeah, exactly. Like, if, especially when you're doing, like, nested loops. Yeah. And usually you can reorganize the code to work differently, but um, it's just a little bit of extra verbosity. Like, you have one, two three, four, five, five extra lines here. Yep. Okay, so this should fix that issue. Yeah. As long as we save, we did, we're good. <laughs> we're learning. Yep, exactly. No customizations, but that's okay. Uh, so we just need to wait for someone to tail chase. Ziggy at least yeah. got to the four length. That's helpful. I mean, it could, it could, it could just, not happen. It could take a while, him. exactly. See, and this is when, like, I don't have this, but I've, I've wanted for map creation. Oh, there you go. Yep. That was a tail chase that did exactly what we wanted it to, I think. That looked so much better. You're right. That was so much yeah. cleaner looking than, than the other style. I mean, it is, like, if you're thinking of uh, them leaving a hazard trail behind them, it's a little bit like, it's, so wait a second, if you immediately follow yourself, you don't get the hazard, but... Yeah, it doesn't fit like maybe the the theme quite as well, but I think it makes yeah. for much more interesting games for sure, or at least. Uh, and it looks, looks it looks visually correct at least, like yeah. it's not confusing. So oh. these head to heads, something about these head to heads is blowing up something. This is the second time um, we've ended up in a potential head to head position, and we got our yeah. invalid character. Yeah. Um. Hmm. I was gonna say I can. I just, I'm curious enough to look at my ngrok and see. E yeah, I'm like my ngrok like little proxy claims I sent a left move in 350 milliseconds. So weird. Okay. Okay, so I need to get, check out a new branch. What do you want to call this? Snail mode? Yeah. And uh, I'm gonna add maps snail mode. Yeah, what's a good commit message? Oh. I was going to say, we like did 
did quite a few things. It's almost just add the whole game mode. <laughs> uh, do you want to, should we describe it at all in the commit comment or just leave it as this? Either way, uh, I don't think it matters a ton. It depends on how PRs end up getting merged in, in rules, but I, I always, we, we, we can always rebase it. and, Fair. um, yeah, we can clean. Also, it up I don't ourselves. know. I don't know how to add multiple authors. It would be nice if it did that. I do like. Well, I don't know how. I know it's possible, and I think we could figure out how to munge the Git CLI. But uh, I think it's also okay. We'll survive. You added the authors to the metadata as both of our names, and I feel like that. That. Yeah, I'll, I mean, I added our first names. Mm, Maybe we mm -hmm. should. <laughs> well, actually, that's an interesting point. What did I write for my name in my other one? I think I probably did my username. I did. Uh, but oh, yeah. it doesn't matter. I just use my username. It's the same as my name. <laughs> it's not like it was very hidden. Well, what we but it doesn't do matter too much. Is okay. I'm just gonna commit this. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Let's let's change it to. Go go username style. My GitHub name. I'm assuming is the same as your name see, you yeah. entered. Yep, I'm I'm pretty consistent as long as it's not taken on the platform. <laughs> yeah. Um. Okay. Let's do a stress test. Oh of, yeah. Um, I'm I'm thinking. You want to throw some some extra extra snakes on there? I was gonna say we can. I, I think I think uh, Hobbs can handle having at least at least a few. I'll I'll do like at least two of them here. I was gonna say I could probably go with more, but I am running it from the same machine as all of this OBS stuff, so I'm not gonna overload it too too much. Yeah, that's a good point. Okay. Um, <laughs> I think I think Ziggy has a has a mechanism to where if there's more than uh more than two games playing oh, yeah. concurrently, it it times out in fifty milliseconds. So I think Ziggy should be fine. At so least... this will give us eight players. Uh, do you want to change the? I'm wondering if we could change the width and height. Oh yeah, we can make it a little bigger for sure. Um. Uh, I'm fine with pretty much any size. Size isn't gonna affect Hobbs too much. I'm gonna go 19 by 19. I like it. With eight players, I think that's a good amount. Yeah, I think yeah, 11 by 11 would definitely be a little small for that. Okay. Saved it. Yep, good. Nice. <laughs> Oh, only one of Hobbs got customizations, and then we blew up like almost immediately. Yep, <laughs> but we uh, we almost it, saw it, the green. I was gonna okay. say we almost got there. Oh, we got a different error this time. Invalid character different. G in literal null. Yeah. Um, it's a new one. Oh, waiting for a response from my server. Oh, so that could have been an actual like. Timeout, timeout on one of the Hobbses. Uh, okay. Where, like, did my server crash? Oh, yeah, cool. I have crashes in my actual server code. Uh, <laughs> so I'm obviously not returning valid JSON when I crash, which uh, isn't overly surprising to me. Not great, but, you know. Uh, I wonder if that's been happening more, and I haven't been checking my actual, um, uh, like, snake logs. Oh yeah, I'm getting yeah. lots of. I have some good panics in here, out of bounds index stuff. Um, oh, I'm just gonna check in my code really quick. I'm not gonna put my uh, thing on screen yet. Um, Do you think it's the out of bounds hazards that are causing your server to uh, air out? Oh, that's an interesting question. I but I, I that wasn't my initial thought. So let me actually check what I was thinking. I think I have a badly hard coded thing in one of my in my a uh, scoring function um i call it my spread from head where i try to determine how much space like hobbs mm -hmm. thinks they can take up um and if i'm remembering correctly i have like an 11 by 11 hard coded in here 
Um, I'm not finding it right now, but I think that's likely the case. But we were actually were playing at 11 by 11 for a while. Were. So, and we got occasional errors, but not like not every all the time. time. Yeah, and actually I'm not finding that line of code anyway, so maybe I was wrong about that. Um, oh yeah, I'm using a VEC now. It's it's resizable. Um, I'm actually not sure. So it's definitely something in my code. Um, but I don't know exactly what it is. I don't think it's all the out of bounds. Like again, like you were saying, it's not every time. So I don't think it's yeah every out of bounds uh, hazard is causing it. But uh, ooh, well, these look really kind fun. Of fun. This is kind of fun to watch. Yeah, I had tabbed away, but I really like this. This is fun. And actually, when I, when we started out, I was thinking seven might be a little long, but I actually really like this tail length. I think it's a good yeah. a good tail length. Okay, here's a question. Do you think the tail length should be dependent on the length of the snake? Oh, that would be fun. Because we could make it to where... Oh, something interesting happened up there where like another snake crossed over did it the like... slime trail, but they did it like with no gap, and so it worked. So it intercepts, yeah. Yeah. So there, and I think we, so that's actually interesting. One thing when we were talking yesterday was we were saying this was going to eliminate tail chasing or make it a lot hard, like kind of eliminate tail chasing as a strategy. But I think how we coded up the, your head doesn't uh, get covered case and how everything worked, it means you actually can do a tail chase if it's like a perfect tail chase. Yes. And actually, this is really interesting because the perfect tail chase is more risky when you're chasing another snake because they could eat food yeah. and then it would kill you. Um, I like this. So I'm almost thinking that the the if we made the length of the hazard or the amount of hazards deposited scale with the snake length, mm -hmm. it would enforce like an end game because you'd get these really like at this point, they'd be depositing 15 hazards at once. Yeah. Uh, that could be kind of well. We could see how it works. Yeah, I'm I'm down to at least try it out. Um, okay. Do you want to actually take just a uh, break from mapping and go back to some platinum games for just a few? Oh yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, we yeah. had talked about going back and forth. Well, I think I'm getting pretty ready to wrap up. But do you want to do at least one more of our uh, uh slime? What do we call it? Snail yeah. modes before we wrap up. I was wondering if we could try. Okay, I'm ready. Uh... You ready for the screen? I'm ready. Awesome. Uh, guest screen. Okay, all you. So, one thing to notice here is that the list of hazards is getting ridiculous. Yeah. This is all one hazard. Mm, okay. Wow. Also, wait. wait, wait a second. One seven is repeated so many times. That's a that's that's got to be a bug. Right. Yeah. Well, so I think I think we have a bug because fourteen four is also repeated way too many times. Yeah. Um, Interesting. I'm wondering. In the meantime, if we could do something where we uh, just cap the total number. Yeah, I think that would be a good a good uh, iteration for for eventually. Not. Or sure. I mean, we can try it uh, now. I don't know. What... I'm not sure if I know exactly what I want to do for that off the top of my head. If editor, actually, we don't cap the number here. Yep. That wasn't what we were seeing. We were seeing a couple of squares that were glitching out and getting way too many. Yeah. But that is where we Which... add a lot. Yeah, it could be something. Hmm. Uh, so I guess we could say the current count. What is the current count? Uh... I don't know if we have the current oh i guess we kind of have we can kind of get the current count right um it's gonna be the so you want to go to the last board i think oh we have hazard counts can we just use our hazard yeah, we have hazard thing? counts yeah okay hazard count yep uh hazard counts does it get uh no i think this is oh well maybe it is yeah uh is it get or do you just array index into it Oh. We arrayed indexed into it earlier with the plus plus, but I'm not sure if that's the best way. And we need to hash the yep. uh, point with the height. Yep, last board state height, yep. Uh, I think also this returns two values typically. I think it returns like OK and the value or something like that. Oh, OK. 
Uh, I'm going to go ahead and check. And map. I actually Googled this recently. Um, I like that. Here it is. So you can say, yeah, if, if value OK, OK is going to be a Boolean, which is true. If the oh, so it's the second the one. Got it. The item or not. Yep. Um, oh, and that makes sense so you, because of the other thing we were talking about earlier about how it's going to default to zero. So if you just got it and it didn't exist, you'd get zero if you didn't check for the OK. Yeah. Yep. So you could say if if not OK and current count equals zero, right? Yep. And then we want to say, well, it's less than seven minus current count. Yep, that's what I was thinking. And then just chat and go link for a sec. I think the OK current count equals zero check is going to be duplicative because in Go, everything defaults to whatever its like initial value is. And I think for yeah, it's right. zero. So I think we just don't need it. We can, yeah, we can use the initial value of zero to... Uh, yep. So let's, simplify that. let's run that. Oh, actually, bef oh, no, I am ready. Cool. So I actually, in the in the test, I commented oh, out Hobbs yeah, for now, but it. I can add Hobbs back in. Either way, uh, Hobbs was one's throwing errors on us, so I'm down to keep it with Ziggy for just a minute. I'm going to do uh, actually 11, 11, but then with only four snakes might be. Yep, might be better. Okay. Oh, even one of Ziggy got no customizations this time. This is weird. What was weird? Sorry. Uh, it's weird that Ziggy got that. The no customization. Um, yeah, right? Because I feel like the only thing I changed was the name. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like that's the full name of the snake. Mm, that is true, yeah. All work and that time. did not have the error. And I th think it looks like we might have fixed the bug potentially. I just I'm not positive if I'm seeing like a lot of repeats anymore in the logs. I'm seeing some, but not nearly as many as it felt like we saw before. Um but some I mean, repeats we should is normal. To see up to, yeah. Because like we are stacking them. Yeah. Nice. Well, that might have been that might have been that fix then. We could also do something where like we panic if there's more than seven in a stack, mm -hmm. just in a, a debug, debug kind stuff. of thing. Yep. Um, I don't know if that's a good idea or not, but I think we could do that, or we iterate over the hazard counts or something. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let's just... actually we're, we're we're doing that down here. Oh, fair. Yeah. Uh, so we could say if count is greater than seven. Then I actually don't uh, know how to do this. Oh, is that a thing? I love it. Yep. Um, Too many hazards. More. Yeah. Either way, you, yours was more descriptive. <laughs> yeah, let's try this I mean, out. Ideally, we, ideally, it would actually um, print something nicer than just. Yeah. Oh, but that time it aired again. Yeah, right. Something... So it's not, it's, not the, it's not the name. It's just kind of a random thing that's happening. Yeah. Um, it could be that servers are timing out, and that's what happens when it times out. Yeah, that that seems potentially right. Um, because it's but definitely not getting panic. Like that. We're not getting panic, so I think yeah. that means that we are not having those infinite stacks. Yeah, I think forming. so. Um, and this is looking really good. I like this. I know it's really cool. Yeah, I think. We could we could make it to where hazards uh, scale with the snake land. Oh yeah, if that you would be fun. That or or we could leave that for Let's, another day. I was gonna say maybe we'll save that for another day. I think I uh, need to head out here relatively soon. Um, but yeah, this was this was great. I do think that would be a fun one for for next stream or sometime to try to do the the lengths as well there. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, I think we might want to wrap up here today. Um, cool. 
Yeah, well, thank you so much for coming again, Josh. I hope we uh, keep making this a regular thing like we talked about. It's been a lot of fun. Um, and yeah, I, I, I enjoy like uh, pairing up on the stream. Yeah, exactly. I'm just typing more things. Okay, <laughs> and, I'm done. And this this slime <laughs> mode was really fun. I like this idea. This one this one came out really cool. Yeah. And it uh, looks really fun to play along with. Definitely. Um, oh, uh, so, oh man, I'm not even going to try this time. I'm sorry. Twitch chatter. Um, you might want to look at some of the... So in Spring League, so one of the streams from the official Battlesnake team is called coding badly um and in oh, the yeah, spring yeah. they actually started doing a blocky blockly snake um and i've missed the last few episodes but i think they got something working pretty well with blockly where it would you know send the the game stuff to your your blockly interface and use that to calculate the move and send it back um yeah. so it, it definitely has been tried a little bit i don't think it got a ton of polish um, polish isn't really the coding badly style, um, but I do believe they got something working there, which was really cool. Um, so if you're interested, go check out some of the the Twitch video on demand VOD things for. Uh, I think it was the Spring League coding badly. Um, yeah, and if if the uh, if the um, I was gonna say if if it's no longer on Twitch because I'm not sure how long mm, they keep mm -hmm. the old VODs on there, they also post it on YouTube. So if you check out the Battlesnake official uh, YouTube channel, they will have those old episodes, and you could find the one where they're doing Blockly. Yeah. yeah. But it is an awesome um, idea, and if you wanted to continue doing that, I think the community would be pretty excited about it. It's, a, it's, a, it's really fun. Yeah, and also uh, Joe, I believe, has just released a tool where you can make a snake in JavaScript in a browser tab and then deploy it and run it without having to set up any servers or anything like that. Nice. Um, so that might be another kind of fun one to introduce Battlesnake to someone. Yeah. Because then you, you're able to get in there and play around with like a web editor, web text editor. You don't have to install a text editor locally and you don't have to worry about deploying. Um, so that might be a fun thing to kind of explore. That is also very early stage, so I don't think it's polished yet. Yeah. But... but uh... Awesome ideas. I like that. I don't even remember if I knew that one existed. That one's fun. Well, should we should we officially wrap up here, Josh? Yeah. Let's do it. Let's, we, can, we can be done. Let's do one more. Let's see this last game. I like that. So uh, I guess I'll just tell. I'll, I'll explain what we did a little bit for this. We created this new game map that the the Battlesnake team created an interface where you can make your own maps. And uh, in this one, we decided we wanted to. We called it Snail Mode. So after your tail leaves a position, you kind of leave a, a trail of this hazard sauce, and it takes it takes more damage if you were to go through it. Um, oh, so actually that worked really well. The decustomized snake, you kind of could see, avoid the little trails and found a path through them a second yeah. ago. Um, so yeah, this is what we did. We did some custom coding for this, and then we looked at some other games. Um, but this was a lot of fun. Yeah, this might be an official game map in in a few weeks that we can actually. It might be. We'll see. Other people can try it as well yeah. if if we iron out all I the bugs. And... I definitely think we can get it live so people can play with it, and then maybe maybe it'll be a fall league map if uh, everything works out. <laughs> yeah. I also really like both of the battlegrounds. Uh, yeah. Wrapped chaos and uh, and especially what was that one we were just lava looking bridges. At? Lava bridges, I think, is a really interesting game mode too. Yeah. I would not. I would not be sad if those were the pick for the fall league. No, me neither. Um, if if it's wrapped chaos, I'll it'll force me to make some different changes. But that's great. It's a it's always a fun reason to to add some different code in there. Um, yeah. So yeah. Well, thank you so much, Josh, for coming on and uh, chatting with me again. Had so much fun as always. Yeah. Um, thank you. So yeah. We will see you next time. Hopefully, we have you on again in a week or two, Josh. And. Uh, sure. Hopefully everyone enjoyed it, and uh, we'll see you all next time. Thanks. Yeah. Bye, everyone. Bye. And uh, with that, do you want to do? You want to switch over and do some of our uh, map programming that we started yeah, last let's week? Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Let me just. I'm gonna close some of these tabs that I don't think we need as much anymore. Close, 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 close. Okay. Um, so me and Josh have been working a little bit on a new map. So if you um, aren't familiar, there's new maps that um, you can 
make. There's a whole, oh, and I can probably bump up my font size here. There we go. Um, so this is the rules repo, Battlesnake rules. Um, so the go repo and one of the cool new additions they have is different maps. Um, so like we could look at the arcade maze map and, uh, eventually here here we can see all the food positions hard-coded and um i think the hazard positions are hard-coded as well and so you can construct your own map in go and um we were working on something we called snail mode where the snakes leave behind a trail of hazards after them um and this was just a fun a fun mode and um i think we got pretty far last time it was working pretty well um should we maybe run a game and see how it was looking and see what we wanted to do next? Yeah, let's uh let's run a game and see if see if it's working. Uh, yes, very much like Tron. Maybe we should name it Tron or something. If they were glowing like neon trails, then yes, it would be Tron. It would be very Tron. Um so give me like uh, 30 seconds for my code to compile here and I will get a game running. So I think I made an update uh, over the this last week. That should help us debug if our snakes are returning errors. Oh, yes. Uh, so now the CLI will keep the game running, even if a snake times out or errors. Nice. Uh, nice. And it will print a little, uh, like, a warning message that shows the error message that they got from the server or the body of the, the response. Perfect. Um, and I... So that should help, like, what we saw last week where, where occasionally one of the snakes would air out, but then it would just stop the whole game. Yep. And, well... I'm very happy that we have that fixed. Oh, and actually, that's probably what... This is probably close to telling me that this error post wasn't there yes. last week. So this yes, is, that is the error. This is yes. the error. These were just... I didn't start my server errors, um, but still very helpful. Um, I yep. think... And so it should keep the game running like until you hit the wall anyway. Nice. Or... I think I also, hopefully, fingers crossed, fixed the errors that I was seeing there. Um, so that will be good as well. Ooh. So. We'll, we'll let this game we, run. We got, we got a game going. We got it going. That's awesome. So just to chat about it, because I thought it was interesting, Hobbs's issue from last week was um, the number of snakes and board sizes were leading to uh, array out-of-bounds errors, where like when we had five uh, snakes, I was, had a hard-coded four somewhere, and it was reaching out past the end of an array. And uh, well, luckily in Rust, that yeah. just crashes instead of does random memory access, um, but still... A crash wasn't wasn't helpful for Hobbs to actually uh, play the game, but here we go. This is this is working well. I like it. Oh, backwards spy. So they had a game uh, AI class in university. We wrote agents for the 2010 Google AI Challenge, which is turn-based Tron light cycle game. Worked in a similar way to Battlesnake, except with processes communicating over standard in, standard out. That's really I did Minimax for that too. Yeah, that sounds awesome. like pretty. I like that. That sounds really like pretty similar, especially to this game mode. Oh whoa, what did Ziggy, what did Ziggy do? <laughs> uh, Ziggy, I think they, they kind of. Oh, oh no. so Ziggy in 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 the tree search, Ziggy doesn't know the trail that trails will be left behind, and so it thinks it can go left and then chase its own tail. Oh, okay. But then now, so now suddenly there's a there's a hazard there, death hazard there, and it's and too so, late. Yeah, Ziggy's not yep. going to do good look ahead in this game yep. mode. Um, yep. Oh, okay. And what's interesting here is there is actually some health left. That that move wasn't oh, there is. totally fatal. I didn't realize right away, but not enough to keep going. I guess must have been one health. That's kind of amazing. I I, I think we left them at the default, which is fourteen, right? Uh, yes, and I think that's in our Python test file, so I can look it up. Uh, yeah, we didn't specify one in the CLI, so I think that means it's going to default to the 14. Um, 14 times 7 is 98, and then you add plus 1, so it is oh, yeah. actually 99 damage, which is what we're seeing here. And then that makes sense, because you had just eaten, right? So at 100, yep. down to 99, and then at yeah. 0. Um, that's actually kind of fun. I like that it's 99, not 100, just because it's kind of fun. I'm not sure it actually is going to like make a difference to snakes playing the game, yeah. but I think that's fun. Um, yeah, so that's something I'll, I also, you know, I don't think Hobbs or Ziggy right now 
like they know once the hazards are on the board they understand them but uh, neither one of us are uh, predicting that they're going to spawn from the tails like they do right so that would definitely that's be like part of the simulation that needs to run yep um so backward spy i'm curious you say it's very similar the main fundamental difference is that the tron engine had a turn order as opposed to battle snakes simultaneous moves uh I'm curious if that means min min max would be easier to implement if they're taking turn order, or yeah. is it about the same difficulty? Because it seems like simultaneous moves is not, uh, at least there's not very much when you go reading about min max. It's usually about chess, which is ordered, you know, turns. Yep. And yep. not simultaneous. So I'm kind of curious the difference that you experienced there. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, Ninety nine means that the snake could dip through the tra tail and pick up flavor disc immediately afterwards. Yes, that's true. Yep. So there's there's some interesting edge cases that, that you could do to survive cutting through your own trail. And I think... Yeah, I like that, actually. I think we should yeah. leave it. Yeah, no, I definitely think we should leave it. I think what's also interesting, though, in, and I think this is true, with how the um, rules are implemented and the, the order of things, I think even if it was 100 damage i think like if it was a 100 damage thing and there was a food already in that spot you're always allowed to mm -hmm. eat the food immediately um and survive yeah but i think i think the trick there would be no food will ever spawn there because your tail was there last turn um right i actually don't think i think a food can spawn there um and the reason i know that is from one of the challenges the survive 2500 challenge uh, turns challenge one of the single player ones um i spent a while on that challenge just because i like the single player challenges and uh the reason my snake will not beat that at the moment is there's a case where the food will spawn in the place where your tail left um oh interesting and then in that game mode there was food everywhere else and it kind of ends the game because there's no safe ways to go uh, so i do think that is actually a, a valid at least in the 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 single player ones i kind of assume it's the same logic in all of them but uh i do think it's a, a possibility hmm. which okay. is interesting yeah um i feel yeah. like my my simulation is probably never quite the same as the official rules yeah it's close right i try to you know there's always edge cases yeah exactly i actually tried at one point and i need to revive this because it was a lot of fun i had a little thing written well that compiled both my simulation and the Go simulation to Wasm, and then used some JavaScript to make random board states and see if the simulations had the same outcome um, as like a fuzz testing to see if my simulate matched mm. everything that the Go simulate did. Um, That's a really good idea to really try to find edge cases. Yeah. Yeah, and it did help me find some edge cases, um, and then I was pretty confident that I had no more edge cases. But in the very narrow slice of no food spawns, no hazard spawns, just snake moves. Um, so I needed to add a little mm -hmm. bit more to there to, to be confident in all of the things. Um, but maybe I'll pick that back up for the fall. Too many things to pick up for the fall, but uh, we'll I, I see. Know, there's so many things to do. <laughs> uh, Backward Spy says, yeah, I feel like Tron, Tron being turn-based does make the Minimax implementation a little easier to reason about. It also seems to be the native application of Minimax. So there's lots of documentation on it. Yes, that's yeah. what I've seen as yeah. well. I think um, one of the big things that's different is what we were chatting about earlier, Josh, about the being able to put the moves directly on the board versus having to keep the list and uh, evaluate it later kind of idea, yeah. which definitely is more documented and, and like like we're all saying, in the, the turn-based instead of the save-it-up-for-later approach. Yeah. Um. Okay, so, so I yeah. guess our question for uh, for this snail mode is what do we need to do? Yeah, what's next? Or what what's should we left? do to it? Is, it? is it done? I kind of I kind of want to experiment with what would happen if the trail uh, size or trail length was determined by the snake oh, length. Yes. So basically, when you start off, you leave a, a trail of three. I liked that a lot. And then... As the snakes get longer and longer, it would kind of force an end state to the game because you're leaving behind bigger and bigger hazard trails. Yeah, I like that a lot. So let's uh, work on that, maybe? I don't know that it's a good idea, but we can definitely try it. And yeah, see. well, it'll be fun to see, if nothing else. Um, uh, Brad likes it, so that's I... that's all that counts. We got Brad's, we got Brad's thumbs okay, up in chat. Okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs>
it's helpful to have the person who will be reviewing your PR in chat <laughs> as you're writing the code. Exactly. It's like a, a preemptive uh, review. Um, <laughs> so I think one thing that I was thinking of, so I was trying to think about how to implement this actually the other day. Yep. And I think the issue is, is that if you have a, a point on the board, like we're tracking where the tails were yep. and an off board date yep. because we're doing that hack to remember where things were. But is there ever going to be a case where you don't know which snake that offboard tail came from or is associated with when you go to find the length of that snake for adding the hazard? Oh. Oh yeah. Oh for sure. I didn't I hadn't got there, but for sure. Um So oh, what I well, was kind of thinking yeah, is Yeah, you go. Okay, I have an idea too, but I'll let you go first. Okay, my idea is kind of uh, we're again using offboard hacks. We could yep. basically say that the y-axis of the maybe a different offboard uh, section, or we could keep going using the up section as well. We could use food that are offboard. Okay. Yep. <laughs> and, and we could uh, basically say that like y zero of the offset board is is index a snake at index zero, and the x position is the length of the snake. I like that. That's a fun one. So here's what I was thinking and okay, we can we can yeah, see we can see which one we like better um so i think when we add the thing to the off board which i will we'll have to find in code um i don't remember where we wrote that um read off board imply seven what i was thinking is maybe when we set the off board we can just mm -hmm. do the right number like double stack it seven times off board and then just pull them all back oh, when we need them yep um I'm not sure. Yeah, I mean, it would it would slightly increase the number of hazards in the payload, but yep. I don't think we're concerned with that at this point. Yeah, I was gonna say. If, <laughs> I think unfortunately <laughs> we're we're a little past <laughs> caring about that too too hard. Um, so okay, so the idea is basically we're gonna we're gonna actually translate the entire offboard stack yep. onto the board is the idea, rather than um, translating uh, only one or basically translating one and then saying that equals seven. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Okay. Um, so I think so I'm just getting we should, used to the code. Okay. But here's, I think, where we add the offboard tail at yep. the moment. So and do I store tail location? Are you following me to the side? Or uh, oh, I invisible? can. Let's do that. Uh, I am not at the moment. I mean, if your screen is wide enough, it's kind of hard to fit both it, side by side. It is at least for for my view. Um, if in okay. chat it is not wide enough or whatever, please let us know. So maybe store the store tail function can take another int, which is going to be the so count. So store tail totally could. It doesn't actually do the storing, and maybe we could fix the naming. It just returns the point. That oh, is off, oh, you're right. Off. You're right. You're right. Okay, never mind. Um, but you know that also is just because that's how we have it written at the moment. So I think I want to be uh, on line like 138 down here, something like for oh man, and then oh yeah, something like that. Thank you, Copilot. Yes. Um, <laughs> precisely. And I did actually install uh, the well, function. except for seven. Instead yeah. of seven, we need to use the length of the snake, which body, is just right? this, I think. Yeah. Um. And okay. So I just installed the Vim, uh, hope or the Vim, the, the the Vim plugin for VS Code. There we go. I got my words out. Um. But I'm not used to it yet, so I'm gonna uh be a little confused how the things work. Okay. But for I, so yeah, I think that works to store it right. And now. When we pull it off down here, read the boards off, skip position if a head occupies it. Okay, I think that we still want to keep. Um, so, and then here, we were, this was also where we had decided that we wanted to only max it at seven. Do we, do we want to mm -hmm. keep only maxing it at seven? Well, that well, if we're if we want a a, a tail that oh, lasts I guess longer, kinda, we have yeah. to do beyond seven because they're always going sense. to be decremented by one. Yep. Um, okay. Uh, but but I think what we need to do is we actually need to say what's current count. So this was looking at the hazards, well from our hash hazard counts is a okay. Let's let's remind ourselves how anything worked. 
Um, so in the beginning, count the number of hazards for a given position. Add non-double tail locations to a slice. So we went through all the hazards in the board. And we ignored them if it was out of bounds. And if it was in bounds, we just counted it. So this was just a hash of hashed position to count of hazards. Um, but I don't know if that's as important anymore, at least in this bit of code, because we're not going to do the max at 7 bit. I think that's why this was important for us last week. Okay. But I guess is is the... Okay, so we're, we're ranging over tail locations... And tail locations and we wanna, is... What we need to do is we need to get the count of the items at that tail location so we can transfer the whole stack. So the tail locations, I think, are actually going to be... With how it's implemented right now, We, if it's out of bounds, we decided that that was the tail location and pushed oh. it to the list. So I think now... So that our, means actually tail, tail locations will contain like the whole the stack. The whole stack. But they... So, so I, if we if we just iterate over all the tail locations and add, I think we just oh yeah want to get yeah, rid yeah. of our loop and just add the hazard. Yep yep. yep. Uh, so uh, except what about seven minus current count? I think this was just to max it at seven, so that we never went above seven in a stack. So I think we just want to drop that as well. Okay, what I'm confused about is why does it say seven minus current count? Oh, I see. That if you run over the same hazard uh, twice, so like if yep. you were looping back over a hazard that had two there already, you you don't add seven to two and get up with nine. The idea is you minus away the current count to to get a max of seven. Okay. Yep. And so, I think we'll you know we have decisions ish to make of whether we want to because you know this would if there was already two stacked and then you have length ten it would be up to 12 stacks. And yep, the question yep. is whether we like that or not. Uh, but I think we Let's can see what happens. See what happens. Yeah. yeah. Uh, also, we could try adding uh, try adding three Ziggies to the board and see if my oh, sure. my sad small server can handle it. I downgraded the Ziggy server to one core. So we'll see. <laughs> yeah. Let's, let's find out though, right? Nope. I wanted them on new lines though. And this is where the... Okay. Oh, oh. I can... Oh, Sorry, no, I got it. it. Uh, uh, we probably wouldn't... Two. We only want three. Oh, yes. Yep, not three extras, just three total. Yeah. Um, cool, and then we're good to and try that out. Uh, oh. Well, actually, you're running from closer to Hobbs, so this yep. should be fine. Yeah. And also, Ziggy, Ziggy's based in Toronto. And that's close to me physically, so... Yeah, so you could probably do 500. Cool. Okay, uh, I don't think this play button is going to work for me, so I'm going to switch to my terminal. Okay. Those look like three tails at the moment. Yep. Okay. Without pausing and counting, it's hard to be sure, but it looks like it's doing what we expected it to. Yeah, we may have to watch the, uh, the, the like, output from the... Oh, that's fair. We uh, might want to look at the CLI. The we, we can look at that at the end and see if it's if seeming it, if correct. It right, yeah. I'm focusing on Hobbs at the moment, and the stack looks correct out of the tail, but hard to count for sure. Hobbs, Hobbs has gotten up to seven now, and it does look like, yeah, there's seven now behind yep. Hobbs. I do really like the decision that we made that you're allowed to tail chase yourself or other snakes. I think that makes it really interesting. Right, but you have to tail chase with Perfectly. no, yeah. you no can't, room for error. You can't do a gappy tail chase. Um, oh, oh, there we go. Look at that. Trapped, Hobbs wins. Trapped Ziggy up in the corner here in Hazard. Super interesting how these games play out. Um, but it did. It did. I I think the the stacking worked out well there. Yeah, I think I I feel like that's working. Yeah. Um, can we can we see? Oh, you want to I mean, look none at the... of them got very long, actually. You want to look at the CLI? Is that what you were asking? Well, I'm not sure that this will uh, help us. Yeah, there's um, unfortunately just a little bit of a lot in here. Not bad, but... We need to write a, a script three, four, that reads five, the CLI six, output and counts up... Yeah, right? 
he scores and then outputs it in dictionary form or something. <laughs> all the tools for all the things. Um, Actually, I very often will write a quick Python script to do something like that because I don't know. It's just it's 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 easy enough. It helps fat. you out. Yeah. 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 Um, I'm like pretty convinced that that did what we wanted it to. Um, let's run a couple more games and okay. see if if we see any edge cases pop up or things that look odd. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna count some okay. tails yep. now. Too. I'm seeing three. Yep. I'm seeing four. Yep. Four. 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 Yep. We all have linked four, and it looks like four is what I see. Yeah. So like I do like the tail chasing thing, but I do think that is one of those things that's not super obvious from watching the game why it happens. Yeah, I mean, I think the if you watch the game without it and then you see the tails always being covered by a black square, yeah, it's obvious that it's really just for visual <laughs> reasons. Yep. Well, was that the, <laughs> Cause the Don't we have a specific weren't those different problems or am I misremembering last week? I thought we well, had I, a specific check the for the head separately from hmm. the the tail thing. But I don't know. We'll look at the code in a minute and find out. So I remember my big reason for wanting to have the hazard start behind the tail and not directly on the tail is that if you start it directly on the tail, the tail is completely covered up by the hazard. Yeah. Um, and so it just looks like you can't see any of the snake's tails. Yeah. Let's take a look at the code for a second, just because I'm curious about that. Because I don't, I definitely remember the, so I was thinking, and we're about to find out, so it's fine. I was thinking that the, the immediately on the tail where the, the hazards were on the tail, the, that visually looked weird. And I thought that was why we stored the state off board. And this if head check was yeah. different. Like, I kind of want to mm. comment this out and see what a game looks like. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that if head check is probably the point where, oh, we need to comment uh, out. We could just comment out the whole thing. Because now this is uh, this is mad now inside the for loop. I think all of this was essentially just to give us the is head uh, check. We just needed the for loop to, oh, yeah, you're right. All right. to okay. do the variables right. Uh, so I'm kind of curious what this looks like. Because hmm. I think we're still going to see... Yeah, that's what I was expecting for the tails. Because I think that's what we did for the off-board state, was to make it so the tails didn't overlap. And okay. I think we did, at one point decided we kind of liked being able to tail chase, but we also might have been trying to solve a different bug that was less related. <laughs> yeah, so off-stream I discovered a bug, which is basically that the... The snakes that are stored in last board state include eliminated snakes. Yes. So you have to check for eliminated snakes uh, and exclude them from certain calculations. Yeah. Um, and I think that might, like, I think it was like one of those combo things where we fixed it kind of by doing the head thing, but that wasn't really, really the the proper fix. Wait, did you see, did you, did you I, see that weirdness? I think so. Except now this we're going to. We, this is probably why we changed our mind. I think so. We're, we're talking about, like, right over here-ish, right? Yeah. Where Ziggy... See, like, oh. you, you get a hazard pile on your head, but your head is already there, so you don't get penalized for it. Yeah, it's the order... It's the Because our map basically runs last. So yeah. even if we put a hazard where your head went, it didn't take damage. And that looked weirder than just avoiding it altogether. Not only does it look weirder, it would be very hard to program for because yeah, uh, you would have to program for basically like hazard that doesn't exist on the board that's going to be dumped on you. Yeah, well, um, so it'd be it'd be really hard to program a snake that didn't account for the entire uh, hazard trail yeah. properly. Yeah, I think I think that's it, right? You would have to do the full hazard tail. Um... And uh, I don't know when you sent this, Brad, but bye if I if I caught you before you headed out. <laughs> um, oh, bye, Brad. <laughs> that um, was probably a while ago. I know, right? It really could have been. I just I just looked over. Um, We're bad at checking chat, chat. I know, right? We we do okay, but definitely not as as good as we could be. Um, but yeah, no. So that does look really weird. Um, so this is very different, and this is more like uh, 
feedback or thoughts on how the map system is implemented. Um, I was thinking about this storing state thing and, you know, we're using the off off map hazards for that at the moment, but uh, I don't think it's our favorite thing in the world. Um, but so what I was thinking about is I don't know if you're familiar with the concept of like middlewares for web servers. I'm thinking of rack specifically mm -hmm. just because Ruby's what I know, but not specific. Um, where I think how the maps are kind of implemented right now is they're just the last step of the the like order of operations of things. Like we move snakes and then we do food and then we do hazards and then we run our custom map code that can mm -hmm. replace things. Um, and I was wondering if it was changed to be more of a, a middleware stack where like the map could still be the outermost layer, but it would inside it call down the stack so basically you would be able to write code before you evaluated the stuff underneath and then again after you evaluated the stuff underneath um and i w was thinking oh, I see. that that might help us i definitely think that would help us in at least in this specific map not need to store state because we could check the tail location before we evaluated the the move right and then know it yeah. after we evaluated the move and be able to just use that without and still be more stateless um, yeah, I wonder if that would also help this because then we could decide to place the hazard before we evaluate the hazard damage and everything. Um, yeah, and it might display at the same time because, you know, we're talking about one <laughs> one move. It's not like we're going to display in the middle. Um, but that's just a, that could be a large refactor to how they work. Um, yeah, could I, be interesting. I have a feeling that would be a high impact change for oh, the for sure. Way that the game is set up yeah um but definitely something that would be good to discuss yeah i'll uh, I'll, I'll probably too bad, make a too bad red left i was gonna red say left right exactly the time when we need his input i know right it's okay it's okay <laughs> I, I did this to him on thursday as well i said hi at the beginning oh, okay. of the stream and hung out for a bit and then i had to leave to do work things unfortunately real job um and no, i hate having to work right i know right and then they brad was uh mentioning me later and asking if i was still there and i felt bad when i watched the vod that i yeah. that i was not there anymore <laughs> mm -hmm. but uh it's okay um so i think i'll make a feedback issue about that just because it'll be fun to discuss yeah. not that it needs to change but i just think it's a fun a fun thing to chat about um yeah but in oh, general this is a crazy situation that developed in the corner here oh yeah because like hobbs is pretty pretty stuck um yeah. <laughs> but then this ziggy i don't know which wait, wait which one is it ziggy three this is that whole thing we were talking about where this looks like you should have just taken a ton of damage. Um, right. But didn't just because of how the order of operations works here. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, I think. I think I think with the current game, with the yep. current limitations, we should probably enable this. I agree. I agree. Because um, it's I, I think it's less confusing this way than it is how we just watched for sure. And then I think maybe we can add a comment that summarizes the reasoning why. And mm -hmm. that would be that. Uh, what what is the reason for this? Um, um, if otherwise hazard shows up yep. in the viewer on top of a snake head, yep, but uh, does not deal damage. damage yeah, uh, damage the snake. Yep is uh visually confusing yep um yeah so there was a I visual that, reason that we did it. i didn't remember yeah. that but that that makes a lot more sense seeing it again um, that's why it's good to comment your code so you remember a week later when you come back to it exactly exactly um so now that we saw it this way i'm gonna i just want to run another game to to watch it again how we how we have the code at the moment yeah um, I also just like watching snake games, so. <laughs> um, uh, Backwards Spy asks, what do you both do for work, if you don't mind me asking? Yeah. Uh, uh, I'm a software engineer, uh, mostly working in, like, the, uh, what is it? It's like design visualization oh, nice. for apparel. Um, and, yeah, I've been doing that for six seven years now before that i was working as like a 3d artist in a visual effects studio oh wow that's um, fun 
and I actually went to art college for that, like kind of like game development or 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 visual like uh, visual special effects for for movies or TV. Oh, that's really cool. And I worked in that for a number of years, but then uh, it turns out you need to do a lot of automation, and Python was the language. Oh, okay. Uh, that that all the like three D applications support as like a scripting language. So I ended up learning scripting on the job just as like a extra thing to do. Yeah. Then I really enjoyed it and ended up doing so much of it for the company that I wrote, wrote a whole 3D pipeline for them. Nice. Uh, and... Nice. Yeah, I was going to ask you, you did, you did, you explained it already, but I was going to ask how you got into uh, doing more coding from that background. That's fun, though. That's really awesome. Yeah, it's a, it was just like on the job, uh, gradual, like learning. Nice. That's awesome. What about you? Uh, so I'm also a software engineer, though I guess in the last, you know, six months I'm doing uh, more uh, engineering management a little bit more. Um, so I work mm -hmm. for a small medical company called Wellsheet, and we make a tool that uh, helps doctors in the hospital. Uh, basically, they don't like digging through data, so we try to present it in a nicer way for them so they can, you know, treat their patients better and stuff like that. Um, so. I come from a very web development background. Um, that's what I do and have done for 10-ish years or so professionally. Um, so hmm. so that's where I where I got into all of this. Um, so uh, Battlesnake, you know, being a web-based and server-based game uh, fit into that really well for me and made it really easy for me to, to get started. Um, so yeah. Nice. But what language do you typically write at work? Uh, so our server is Ruby and Rails. Uh, so mostly Rails oh, cool. on the back end and then uh, TypeScript and React on the front end. Um, I nice. typically stay in more of the back end nowadays, but uh, we're a 12-ish engineer company. So I get to do all kinds of different things on different days, which is also yeah. what I love. Nice. Um, I actually really love Ruby. I played around with it a little bit this year. Yeah. Um, and it's a just a nice language i really like it i think you know i've i've now fallen in love with rust in the more recent years right um but i do really like ruby and uh i was saying this to someone this week at work just talking about different programming languages ruby fits really well with how i feel like programming and code should work in my head like when i'm just like uh -huh. thinking about it and envisioning it ruby fits my mental model really really well yeah. um and that's one thing i've always liked about it yeah, for me, like Python is definitely the language that I have the easiest time in just because I have so much, I think I have like 10 years of experience writing Python. Yeah. Um, but it's not my favorite language for, for, especially for large code base. I would say Python is my favorite language for small scripts that are like hacking something together quickly. By far my favorite language for that. Although yeah. I think Ruby could replace that if... If I had happened to learn Ruby first, then yeah, exactly, I think Ruby right? would be a great language for that too. Yeah. But I think in terms of working on a larger project, I like strongly typed languages now better. Yeah. Like Go or, um, yeah, Go is actually, I love Go. It's nice. great. So simple and straightforward. Yeah. And I, I like that there's no hidden like exception handling. You have to, it's super verbose, but mm -hmm. uh you have to like handle all the errors up front and it's very clear which part of the code could code could produce an error and i love that yeah yeah um, what's funny is it's just like the the different uh like levels of that like i agree go is much more explicit with their error handling than you know ruby or probably python i'm just less familiar with it uh, so won't well, say python, for sure python and i think ruby too it's same with javascript is any any part of the code kind of could, could throw, throw an, an exception, exception. yep you have to really like you have to go into the code and analyze it line by line to discover which parts could throw an exception. Yeah. And what that result is you you end up being defensive and you say, I'm just gonna do a try accept or a try catch or whatever around the entire block of code because I don't know if it could throw an exception or not. Yeah. And yeah. that kind of thing, you, you have try accept blocks at different levels. Uh it's hard to know when those error paths will be taken or what part of the code threw the error and what state it's in. Yep. Um, it just, I would say, as you scale up to a larger and larger code base and larger and larger teams, the dynamic languages, I think, start to become more trouble than they're worth. Yeah, for sure. And, uh, and I, think... I especially like the, I don't like the throwing exceptions at any point in the code. Yeah, yeah. 
I think what's super interesting is that, you know, like, I think there's like a, a scale to all of this where dynamic languages, the Ruby, Python, JavaScript are on one end and then much farther mm -hmm. the other direction are like Go and Rust. But if you zoom in a little bit there, you know, I'd say that Ru like Go, the thing that I g get frustrated with in my like very, very limited, basically just writing rules repo Go code is that I, I still mm -hmm. have to remember to check the error. I have to do the if error right. not nil rethrow it or you know do do exception handling or whatever and i often forget that and i think the linter usually yells at me but the compiler doesn't yeah. which yeah. is fine right as long as there's a tool that tells me it, it is helpful um but i like rust is just a little bit farther where like you only get one type and it might be an error type or a, or an okay type but you you have to check and figure it out before you can access it either as an error or as a correct correct status or whatever. Yes, I, I like I like Rust. Actually, I would agree. Rust I think is nicer for error handling than Go, and actually Zig is I think nicer than Go as well, just because Go has no mechanism for uh, no shorthand for passing the error up the up oh, the stack. Oh, okay, yeah. Whereas I think both Rust and uh, Zig has the thing of like I think you do try and then you can say exclamation part exclamation point slash the return object and basically saying that this could be an error or it's an error union. Oh, which okay. I think is exactly what you were describing yep. for Rust, right? Yep. Yeah, yeah, I think Rust and and Zig actually have nicer error handling than Go. Yeah, but like I still would say that Go, in the same vein, has much better than like Ruby, Python. You know, the dynamic languages of the bunch. Uh, so it's yeah. just cool to like you know, they're all they're all different on on that axis. Um, and there's, there's right, but also like it's not necessarily dynamic versus uh mm -mm. compiled or whatever. Because say Java, you can throw exceptions. Yeah. Uh, Whereas Go, you can throw exceptions if you panic, but it's 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 discouraged yeah. like, in the style. I was gonna say it's considered like, bad style you could, to use it. You can definitely panic in Rust as well. Nothing stops you, unfortunately. Yeah. Could you just throw a panic in your Zig code, or would that is that a just curious? Uh I think you can crash the program at any point yeah. by not. Basically, you can say catch unreachable, mm. and that's basically saying uh, this this if this ever throws an error, just crash. Yep, that makes sense. Yep. I <laughs> Again, do. it's not like you you shouldn't write that in your production code or your reliable code, I guess. Yep. My snake definitely has a lot of that uh what's it in Rust you can just if you have a the result type, which is that union basically of okay or error, um, I can just call unwrap and it's like, okay, if it was an error, I'm just gonna panic and assume it wasn't unwrap going. Is the same way, yeah. So um, I yep. Have yeah. more unwraps than I might like to admit in in Rust, um, because I get lazy in some of my Snake code. But I like that it at least forces me to to write unwrap, and then I have something to search for later if I am trying to clean it all up. Um, and yeah, backwards spy. I really like the Rust question mark operator. That's the uh, propagate errors up thing, like you were talking about yeah. in Zig. Um, makes it really nice to just just propagate it up. You do have to deal with it eventually up the tree, um, but. But nice to be able to forward it up like that. Uh, Backward Spy says, I work oh, nice. in... You use uh, Python. Oh, sorry. Oh, yeah, sorry. I'm just going to read it. Backend dev <laughs> mostly. Small team, so I do wear a bunch of different hats, though. Mostly working in Python, which I love. I would say it needs a lot of supporting tools to keep it in line for larger projects. Uh, type checking, for example. Otherwise, it can quickly get out of hand. Yeah. Yes, I use MyPy as well, and you are right. That is that is uh, required, required linting for my teams. Yeah. Uh, I, I, actually, I think that greatly increases the ability to scale up the code base before it falls apart is using uh, type hinting. Yeah. I haven't tried type hinting in, in Python, um, so it would be would be interesting to check out. Um, it's kind of, I think of it as similar to TypeScript in terms yep. of its goals. Yep. I was going to say, Ruby has some similar things. Ruby 3 is trying to do a little bit more type checking. Uh, we're using Sorbet at work to do some of that. And it has like you know similar goals to TypeScript. Um, but we also use TypeScript in our React code base. So it's, uh, we get the direct comparison. And uh, TypeScript is well, well ahead of where Sorbet is today. Um, it had like a decade long head start though. So you know can't, can't really knock the Sorbet team at all. But uh, definitely not quite as nice as uh, the TypeScript stuff. I'm actually just really impressed with TypeScript in general, bolting that on to JavaScript. Um, very no, well actually, I, like, I tried both and I love TypeScript as well. I think it's nice just for documentation and for catching stupid mistakes. It's really yeah. helps you do the right thing. Yeah. And like, I just, I'm starting to really like 
all of the editor support with big types and not big types but like strongly typed languages have much better editor support they like yeah know what should go in this field a lot better and i'm i really right. like but developer if use, feedback yeah if you use typescript or python with type hints you get a lot of the same benefits yeah uh which is pretty nice i love it yeah i agree um yeah i i think what you're doing with your ci and linting is the right right approach we we do the same thing where we have MyPy, usually something like Flake 8 or PyLint as well to try to catch some errors early on. Yeah, yeah. I think, you know, linters are, like we've been saying, they're a, a great tool, but they're even more of an important tool in the dynamic languages where you don't have a compiler. So it's like, that's the earliest warning you get a lot of the times is the linting. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, I'm a big fan of linters and stuff in general as well. Um, this is actually not really related to that, but something I'm curious in. I've also pretty recently fallen in love with auto formatters, so I don't have to yes. think about that. Is there is there Python auto formatters that either of you use and enjoy? Yes, uh, I I like the. There's a formatter called Black. Uh, it's based on the. I think there's a quote by Henry Ford that was like. There's something about basically like there's one color and it comes in black. Basically, like, oh, there's yes. no other option. Yes. Um, <laughs> uh, and it's an amazing formatter. I love it because the other formatters have too many options and your team will argue about which options they prefer. Yes. Because mm -hmm. black is like, nope, there's one one style. Everyone should follow it. And there's no configuration except for line length. Uh, yes. Yes. Strongly opinion formatting is the way to go. I agree. I, I wish everyone was on board with it. Um, definitely. At least where I have control of their code base, yeah. I I encourage everyone to use that and and I set it up in the CI and then it's forced on everyone. <laughs> yep, yep, I agree. I... Of course, getting team team buy in is super important. Yes, but uh, if if you're at the company for a long time, then you can uh, you, you have usually... some have some sway. Yes, um, but yeah, no, I agree. I've I used to care a lot more about how code was formatted and everything, but now that auto formatters are becoming more of a thing and especially the opinionated ones like you're mentioning um i've i've and it feels really good to like have not ca not care about it as much anymore either yeah. the auto formatter is going to fix it or i just live with whatever it spits out because it's fine enough yep it's not worth yep. it's not worth arguing about um but i really like that it was a big mindset shift for me a little bit just to be like no yeah it's fine whatever it looks like it'll it'll fix it and i can just move on um yeah but i like and, that and Backward Spy, you mentioned uh, Go did that from the beginning, which is great. Uh, yeah. I agree that yeah. Go was actually, I think, the language that maybe started that trend. I think so. Uh, because now all the new languages, I think, are embracing the add a formatter as part of your tool chain from the very beginning. Yeah. And then everyone will learn to use that style. Yeah, no, I, I think I agree. I think Go was, you know, Go format was one of the first ones that I yep. heard of starting, starting off this whole thing. Um, and I'm glad everyone took that from go i think that was a really good a really good thing to to steal for sure um i'm i'm sad that in ruby we don't have that that at least quite yet um so looking forward to the day that we get a, a ruby format build that that works and can can uh, process stuff that's actually a project that uh penelope uh from snake stuff is working on and that actually has been working on since uh for a while now it's a uh, apparently these auto formatters are a uh, tough problems to crack for sure um oh yeah definitely but i'm excited uh, to maybe get one some someday soon it's, for it's, Ruby. i think it's kind of it's kind of similar to the problems you have when you're writing like a, a parser or something for a language yeah uh well because it's also tricky because you have to like format the code but don't mess up some parts of the code like in python it's tricky because there's white space and comments yeah. that actually have meaning and uh so you have to, you know, change some parts, but leave other parts alone, like the comment sections. Yeah, yeah. It, I think I hadn't thought of the white space being important, but that one's got to be a, another tricky one for sure. Um, I hadn't thought right, about so that. Right, abstract, so the abstract syntax tree has to store additional information, not just the code. Yeah. In order in order to restore the same style at the end or... or yep. And I think things like that. from following along a little bit with Ruby format and what Penelope's done, for an auto formatter, even in a language like Ruby, where uh, you don't have white space as being super, you know, as important as Python, there are things like, you know, you do actually have to think about comments more than if you were just running code, because you probably want to preserve comments. You probably don't want to strip out all the comments in your formatter. Um, so 
it's super interesting that you actually need to you do need a little bit different uh syntax tree potentially than you might if you were actually just gonna run the code or whatever because yeah you do need to keep some of those things around which is just super interesting um Cool. Well, that was just a fun chat about about all kinds of different I've things. I've been trying to comment the code, but it's actually hard to actually write a comment. Oh, well, talk, talk about completely different things. Time. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but I was trying to update our comments to talk about that we're using a stack of hazards. Oh, nice. Uh, that is uh, equal to the length of the of the snake. Perfect. A stack. Um, Stake a stack. Uh, count. Is wondering what else we need or want to do here. Like, I think we're done. We should call it. I think so, right? This might be. This <laughs> so might be it. I think we're at a stage where we should get feedback. Um, yeah. If we we can open up a PR probably. Yeah. And uh, and talk with someone on the Battlesnake team about how to store state properly maybe yeah i think that'll be a conversation that at least comes out of it even if we don't mm -hmm. solve it right away there might be a uh maybe they just need an editor to store state or something you know that can help us out um though I, I said this in discord with uh brad and everything i think that it i've really loved the progression of how to figure out how to store state in these maps coming from <laughs> uh we don't think we can store state at all to oh, we can store state in hazards on the board to, oh, we can store state in off-board locations. It's just been a really fun, uh, like, sometimes it's fun to, like, have constraints on your programming to be creative. And I think, you know, figuring out how to store state in these boards has been a has been a fun challenge like that. Annoying. Um, how do you spell disappear? Uh, I don't know. I might have done with, I think it looks better with 1S, but I think I would have told you with 2 but I'm not positive. Oh, I spelled it first. Yeah. The thing is, my, my editor is not giving me the, the spelling check. Oh. And so, Oops, and I didn't um, need to delete it because I'm in Vim mode and things don't do what I thought they were going to do. I also don't have spell check regardless of how I spell it in Backwards mine either. I, you, have a, you have a snail? <laughs> oh, wow. That's so awesome. That is really awesome. Is it, is it like an aquatic snail or is it a terrestrial? And we'll see if they. I'm really curious about that. But are still here. <laughs> I don't. I don't know how long much longer we're going to be streaming. What do you think, Corey? I was going to say I don't know. It feels like we might be wrapping up a little bit, just because I don't have a ton more to do on this snail mode at the moment. Um, yeah, I think we're probably just going to add some comments and wrap yeah. up. African G land. A snail. giant African land snail. Oh, that's so Called cool. Called boogie. I love that. That's an oh, awesome that's name awesome. for a snail. I love it. Uh, amazing. Well, snail um, mode can be dedicated to, to Boogie, at least today's stream can be. <laughs> yes. Well, thank you so much for joining us and yeah. chatting. It's, been fun. it's so much fun to have people chat and hang out. And uh, I like that you got in on our all our weird programming discussions and everything. Makes it makes it fun that way. Definitely. Um. Yeah, you've got this very well commented up now. Um, uh, maybe. I think we... We may need to update or revisit say, some of the comments. Store hazards so we can decrement stack of hazards by one. We can use the last board state. I'm not sure this comment is super relevant anymore. At least not to the place in the code that it's added. I think yeah. tail locations is, tail locations could use a this, comment. Yeah, what this is, um, I can do. Oops, oh, nope, it's totally fine. We're learning you how do to it. live um, share here. Yeah, good. I you will. have dibs on that comment. Spot. Awesome. I like it. <laughs> Um, and actually, these are onboard positions. We're not commenting our, our functions right now. I forget what the Go style is for doc strings. Oh, does does Go have like actual doc string doc strings? That's cool. They do. I think they're just written as a comment above the function. Gotcha. Okay. But they, I forget if they have a special syntax like three backslashes instead of two. Yeah, yeah. That's I'm, the, I'm, I'll look that up. Actually. I was gonna say that that is the Rust style, um, but not positive. Oh, maybe I'm thinking of a different language. Hmm. It, well, they also could be the same. Not, not, not sure. Okay. 
No, it's not. It's not three three slashes. I'm thinking of. I think that's actually Zig and possibly Russ do that. Mm, okay. Yep. Um, you just write a, a stack of of single line comments above the function, and they get turned into a doc string. Oh, nice. I don't think we need to comment update board because I'm not convinced I would be very good at summarizing that one. Fair. Yeah. But I think store tail location and okay. some of these. I was gonna could say some be... of these helpers could be. Um, there's also a chance some of these could also just be renamed, but I think documenting them is a good first step. Um, when... Um, I also really enjoy CodePilot's ability to finish documentation sentences for me. It's impressive at that. I guess we're calling them points instead of positions. I've always called them positions. We've gone back and forth. <laughs> we can we can uh... try to go with points though. I like that's well the the that's what the go I'm things. saying that because the the official uh... right class is called rules.point so, so yeah we could probably be a little more consistent about calling them all point yep mm -hmm. um uh, these ones are nice and easy Yeah, I think this is the thing that you had fixed off stream was the eliminated check. I did forget that the go keeps everything around. They just don't. Um, they just set the elimination cost. Okay. Um, convert the both just like typing away on the same document. I it's know, so right? fun. I really like I like this. It's a nice way to think, be able to do it. I think this is pairing I could get behind if I was like doing this as as a larger portion of my day because. Mm. It's kind of fun to both be in the same code base working on the same problem, but I don't feel like I'm just like one of you has to be in the back seat doing nothing, just watching the other person. Yeah, yeah. It's it's nice to have like some autonomy and and both be able to type things. I I don't know, it's kind of fun. Yeah, no, I I do enjoy this. Um I think of pairing as like not a complete alternative, but like a a kind of an alternative to code review in some sense where you like get that live code review. Kind of like we were talking about when uh, with with having Brad on stream to tell us exactly whether we were doing and actually right. it can hugely speed up the like software delivery pipeline if you have that built in code review happening early in the early stages of a ticket because yeah. you're not waiting until you've done a bunch of extra work down the wrong path and then changing it you get instant feedback like you can throw out ideas and then someone can say actually that won't work yeah and you don't waste any time going down that wrong trail yeah exactly that that like the faster feedback and everything is super super helpful in, in like a you know team delivery setting exactly like you said So I didn't like describe exactly how we did the hashing and dehashing in the comments, but I felt like the code was readable enough that the why was more important than the how. Yeah. Uh, so dehash converts an integer back into a point. Um, uh, scoring points as int allows using them 
why why we're doing this allows using them for a uh so uh, a, as a, a hash. key and a map right yep a or hash key or whatever a map key a map using them as a map key and if you said i think they call them keys yeah and if you're calling it a map key i will follow suit i called it a hash key but now it's a map key well i think i think in go uh it i mean it's calls... probably accurate to call it a hash key but i think in go the the, the, the data structure is called a map called a map that makes sense so. yeah then that is what we called it down and that or what Go calls it down that we'll use later, so that makes sense. Oh. So, um, one thing about Go, which is kind of interesting, um, here, I'm gonna I'm gonna send you a link. Oh, cool! Yeah, you can learn some Go. Uh, where's the, where'd you send it to me? Just curious. Oh, I sent, I think I sent it to you on Discord. Oh, there we go. It just wasn't, it didn't come up at first, but now okay. we're here. Um, so see the example, how it says fprint formats using the default format. Mm, you know, blah, mm -hmm. blah, blah. The name of the function is fprint. Oh, okay. So the, the, the guideline for go doc strings is that you always start them as the name of the thing does this. Oh, okay. And the name of the thing is the function or the or the, the, the struct. Yep. So that's why I'm. I'm, I'm oh, interesting. Even though I, I wouldn't normally do this in most other languages, yeah. where you say like get previous tail position returns, I would usually just say returns the onward point, which is what you. Which is doing. what I was doing exactly. Yeah. Oh, but that's interesting. I think. And I think it's more important actually for public. So if these were capitalized and they were public, then it would be more important because mm. they'd be part of the official. Yep. Uh, go doc. Yep. Whereas these private functions will never be shown as part of a go doc. Yep. Um, that is interesting, though. I also I, just I like that they have like... documentation on it, right? That's like, you know, better than everyone figuring it out on their own. I feel like it would still be good to follow that style. I don't know. Yeah, no, I'm I, I like that. I like that. No reason not to for sure. Um. Again, I don't actually know Go style very well. I've just read up a, on it a little bit. Yeah. Oh, actually, setup board has a, a doc string that I think. I oh, you wrote I it. I just wrote that a few minutes oh. ago. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, they did write a doc string in their standard thing, but no, you wrote that. Thank oh, you. Oh, and I actually, on accident, unless you just added the beginning setup board, um, I might have done that one right on accident. <laughs> uh. Okay. We still haven't written a doc string for update board, but I'm gonna I'm gonna give it a shot. I'm I'm gonna I'm looking at some of their code to see how well they document things. Yeah. I have to say the documentation in this project is not good. If it's for <laughs> <laughs> for doc strings only. I mean, I think I think the code is pretty readable anyway. Yeah, but, I agree. Uh, but it's not, uh, and that's something that I'm not even great at. I'm getting a little bit better, um, but just actually writing comments in my code and documenting all my things. Um, I'm trying to do the Rust, you know, doc string style stuff more now but uh i'm still still getting the hang of it <laughs> oh they they do have some good doc strings in like this registry module Ooh, okay uh, and that help, that makes more sense because this is you know more public interface as far as the rules are concerned like you have to use this registry when you make the map so that's yeah. and i guess actually and i was going to ask you this i think you said that in in go it's the the capitalization is what's helping to find the public private right so the uppercase ones yeah. are the public yeah. ones yep public uppercase is public lowercase is private nice um i'm trying to find like what's the what's the official documentation for update board but i I don't know where that interface is defined yeah. or is that how it works in Go? Do you def define an interface somewhere? So it is. Um, and I think that's probably in the map dot. 
Oh, I thought there was a maps file in the maps directory, but now I'm not seeing that. Ooh, oh, game I map. See it. Go. A game map interface right yeah. here. I don't know. If you yep, I am this. following um, to the side, so I do see it. So I think we could do some copying of these um, things just to give us a baseline that we could customize. That's fair. Yeah. And I'm going to fix there. We should open an issue that says, you're not following the official Go recommendation. <laughs> there we go. Make a feedback ticket. Super, super nitpicky. <laughs> uh, or maybe just do a PR where you fix it all. Be be nitpicky, but the the helpful nitpicky. <laughs> um. Oh wait, this is a function, so it would return returns. Okay, I gave it a shot on setup and update. Thank you. Yeah. I just copy pasted the meta and ID. Nice. Um, this is looking very well commented now. I like it. I feel like we're I'm bordering a little bit on like adding comments that don't actually help. Yeah, well um, that's something like and not not about that we should or shouldn't do them, but I was just thinking about that when you were adding the like the the essentially copy paste comments from the interface. I was just thinking about documentation in general and wondering how useful it is to document it basically twice, right? When you define the interface and then also when you implement the interface. Um Yeah. Not bad, just just random thoughts. Yeah, and also, so one thing I noticed looking at the other map is that um, ID is this snail mode underscore. And if we go to, uh, I don't know, is this map? Yeah, ID is this lowercase under. Oh, it's the same as name. I think But we... name seems like it's different. Like name, I believe, is what you see in the, like, yeah. the web interface when you have that drop down menu, right? Well, I think so, but I also am not positive there's not another layer of indirection. Um, there definitely could be. Oh, okay. Um, cause Royal has, oh, yeah. uh, Royal is capitalized in the name and but like, lowercase in the ID. Sinkholes is capitalized in the name. Arcade maze is capitalized in the name. I know my solo maze is capitalized in the, in the name. Um, let's capitalize it. I like that better. I, I, think, I think it looks nicer. I agree. I mean, someone on the Battlesnake team can correct us if we are yeah, right? going up gray here. At least we're, we're following some examples though. So I can't, I don't feel like we're too, too yeah. far off. We could we could open another uh, we can open another ticket that's like there's some consistency in how ID and name are are correlated. Sometimes name is the lowercase with underscores. Yeah, which is actually called snake case, which is actually very. Oh, funny. that is funny. I didn't even think about that, but yes, they definitely have the snake case sometimes. I guess right, like the snake case here. Yeah, right. I guess if you're gonna do something in a snake based game, you might as well just default to snake case. <laughs> we should we we should throw uh go conventions out the window and write everything everything in snake, in snake case, case. Yeah. i like that okay. um, cool i think this is well documented yeah i was just realizing that there's a helpers file here which just like in theory i'm not saying we want to do this right now but like maybe we could move some of our helpers to this and share them across maps in like a, a future iteration yeah um, that like, actually is a good idea there there's already is helpers... sorry what were you is on say? board there it yes oh is it... on board is the opposite of out of bounds right yeah it, and it's implemented slightly differently like they just taken the x and the y instead of the point but like usable mm. or wrappable yeah. for sure um so just interesting i didn't realize that uh it was here until just now so I think we're right, good for the we're, moment. We're kind of using our own um, 
our own helper. We're implementing our own little helper function library here. Yeah, and um, I also did not exactly the same ones, but I have a bunch of helpers in my solo maze as well. I think they're at the bottom. Oh, yep. Yep. Um, I don't think that, you know, they're not all shareable necessarily, but uh, uh, definitely could be could be interesting um, to share some yeah. of these across different things. Cool. Snail mode was a lot of fun. I, I liked this one. This is a good a good game mode in general. And then, you know, once we, we chat with the team and maybe can figure out a, a slightly more elegant solution for storing state, maybe we will uh, uh, get to try it out and see how it goes. Yeah, I would love to also have some more snakes that could support this. Yeah. To see, uh, or, or actually, we could do a little more work on our snakes to actually have them be smarter about uh, know, predicting uh, when the... Yep. Uh, how the how the the trails would be, and then we could see like what what does a more uh, high level game look like? Because we weren't currently we're kind of only using snakes that are are not smart to this map. Yep. And what we did do was make sure our snakes account for the double hazards thing. Yeah. Um, so they're they're semi smart, yep. but not like they don't they're not predicting the uh, the simulation correctly. Yep. And. Uh... That's also something that Brad mentioned on his Thursday stream, and I, I do agree that like I really I like the the double stacking hazards and that we can use it, but it's again one of those things that I don't think I think a lot of snakes take the hazards as a set and don't think you know. Yeah, I know all of mine did before I saw the sinkhole stream. Yep, yep, and um, my live ones still do. I just have one little branch that I hacked in the the hazard count thing, um, but I will have to go back and uh probably clean that up if I want to add it for real. Um, I don't love my hack, but it worked well for this stream, so no complaints. Okay. Cool. Um, this seems great. Yeah. Uh, this is awesome. I think uh, one thing we could try doing too is if you uh, if you were to make a commit here, which will be under your uh, user, mm -hmm. there's already some in history under my name. If we merged them or if we squashed them together, I believe it would add both of our names as contributors to the commit yes i don't so we could we could actually try squashing them before we open a, a, a pr to the uh rules repo yeah we definitely can i was trying to remember if i know how to do a squash that does preserve the his the 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 contributor history oh. like that I know it's possible. Um, I don't think I mm -hmm. know the CLI invocations off the top of my head, but I can figure it out off stream. And, uh, and okay, get yeah, that we working. can do that off stream. Uh, yeah, cool, awesome. Um, um, I'm gonna switch. Oh, one other oh, thing. Yep. I don't know if you want to check something really yeah. quick before we before we call it. Yeah. Uh, have you tried out the two new game modes they just added uh, to the? Oh no! Um, absolutely not. But I want to now. So, there's two new custom maps that we can try out. Are they in the CLI? One, what, yeah. Nice. Not in the CLI, or probably in the CLI, but also in the uh, web interface. Oh, they're just live live. Oh, fun. Yeah, they're they're all the way live. Oh, ooh, wait, <laughs> wait. Are we about to get a sneak peek of what the new Battlegrounds are going to be then? I wonder, like, are they the same game maps? Uh, Well, they're ooh. sinkholes and healing pools. Okay. So maybe. 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 I, bet they're, I bet those are going to be uh, on there. Uh, so... What do you want to healing pools, see? Healing pools. Uh, oh, is this the negative yeah. hazard one? Oh my gosh, I love yeah, this. Yeah, uh, Ziggy does not support negative hazards. They will crash and air out each time. Um, let's actually. I'm gonna. I'm gonna check really quick. Now I'm really curious if I. So I was curious if Hobbs uh, does that too, because depending on how you store, like what type of integer you store it as, yeah, it's an unsigned or signed. That. Uh, that was my issue. I think it's just. It crashed because I was trying to store a negative number as an unsigned. Yeah. Uh, so that's hazards. 
Oh, so I need to look at, it's in a different spot, but that's okay. What is it in the wire representation for hazard? Hazards. Hazard damage per turn, I-32. Oh, so I think I support it. That's a, I-32 Ooh, should might. be signed. Yeah. Yeah, you might work out of the box. I might. I might work out of the box. Um, um, but you can add a Nomble Gomble. Nomble uh, Gomble will. We'll, okay. No. Yeah, try saying that several times yeah, quickly. Yeah, Nomble Gomble works. <laughs> <laughs> um, I liked the. I, I I think I've chatted with people about healing pools. The idea. I don't think I've seen it though. So this will be fun. Um, let's just do Hobbs and Nomble Gomble here and see how it yeah, goes. Yeah. I wasn't able to get a good, very good idea of the strategy with these two. Um, yeah. Or at least with, with Nomble Gomble, because my other snakes that were playing against Nomble Gomble immediately aired and crashed. Mm, of course, right? Yeah. And I think it's also interesting to have both food and healing pools. Um, right, there's so many ways to get uh, health now. Yeah. Oh, and you know what's kind of interesting, though? I think Hobbs's, like, move logic, if I go over a hazard probably does know that it's going to heal me but my like scoring function is going to not score hazards as high because that's how my my scoring function works so i'm unsure if hobbs will ever actually try to go through it what's interesting about nomagamble is nomagamble seems to also know that they will heal because they they seem to stick right around love it. Going, circling back and just going over them over and over again yeah um that's super interesting I kind of love it when you don't even program a snake for something and then it turns out to kind of work. Yeah. Well, and that's the crazy thing about some of these game modes. And like if you just do like a like more of a naive minimax or something where your score function is, is like relatively simple and just like lengths and healths like you were saying earlier. Mm -hmm. And the game logic knows how to evaluate the moves. Sometimes that's all you need and you can get a really competitive snake on a new game mode as long as it, you know, sets the health correctly and everything like that, which is super interesting. I think Alex, who makes uh, Pea Eater, mm -hmm. basically only programs in the rules and just lets Monte Carlo simulate yeah. and work. Which is super um, cool. I'm curious to see how well, how easily they are able to adapt to some of these new maps. Yeah. I was going to say, this: the Hobbs and Nomble Gumble are doing well here, but they're kind of just sticking in their own areas here. No one, yeah, they made not... a circle forever. Yeah, we're not, we're <laughs> not getting the most exciting that. game here. Um, but it's working. <laughs> yeah, we may want to end the stream. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. I'm gonna we could be here all day. I'm gonna switch to our talking heads view. Cool. Awesome. Um, and then I think let's wrap up. But the one thing that I haven't done too much of, and I think would be fun, is maybe we'll see if there's any other people doing coding streams, and we can do a little quick Twitch raid and see if any viewers want to join over there real quick. So I'm going to just take a look and see who else is streaming and see if there's anyone fun we can uh, uh, go do a raid on. And if I know how to actually do that correctly. Yeah. I've done our, it once It before. looks like we, we've lost most of our audience. Oh, that's okay. I'm going to, I've already made it to the page. So I'm going to at least give it a, give it a look and okay. see, see what we see. But you're right. Um, don't have as many as sometimes. Random projects in Rust. Any of the people that I'm following or any like lower view count streams doing fun, fun game stuff? They would definitely have to be a low, low count enough stream to appreciate a handful of viewers. Yeah, right, right. Because <laughs> a larger streamer would just be like, what? what you rated you... me with two viewers? Yeah, exactly, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, no one that if we, were, I... if we rated at our peak of five then we that would have, have been, a lot more that would have been a little something right none yeah. of the streamers that i'm following are streaming um you know maybe we'll just we'll just call it today and i'll try to remember doing this for for the future um but this was a lot I of fun josh it's a fun, it's a fun thing to do uh if you if you were able to like give, give someone who normally doesn't have a lot of views like an extra audience it's a cool thing exactly to do. exactly um, but thanks for coming along. This is super fun. I love I love having you on stream and, and chat and encoding. Yeah, I, I enjoy it too. Awesome. Thanks for having me. Yeah, and uh, thanks for everyone who joined and chatted in, in chat with us. It's always fun to have people. Uh, so thank you. And uh, yeah. we'll hopefully see you next week, probably. Yeah, bye, everyone. See you. Bye. <laughs>